Fellas, blink if you haven't purchased a Father's Day gift yet. Yeah, we thought so. Today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Maybe your pops has had a bush since the 70s, and that's okay. Our friends at Manscaped have crafted the total package for his special day, whether it's for the boys downstairs, his beard, or even the best pair of underwear out there. Manscaped has his bases covered. Head over to manscaped.com and get 20% off with free shipping with code SHOW20. Go from daddy to zaddy. Trust Manscaped. I can't wait to buy my dad his first proper ball shaver. I feel that's a father-son moment we need to share together. My sons, I hope that they're going to get me a new ball shaver. Maybe they'll get me a new beard trimmer because I've been using my beard trimmer for a little while. I could do with a little upgrade. Maybe they will get me the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, the complete beard maintenance kit for all of us bearded kings. This all-in-one kit comes with a Beard Hedger, Manscaped's most advanced beard trimmer, as well as shampoo, conditioner, oil, and balm for my beard. It also comes with a brush, comb, and scissors so we can style the beard and moustache like the true gentleman that we are. No beard kit would be complete without Manscaped's handyman face shaver for that smooth finish that we all know he loves. This bad boy is all he needs, compact enough to fit in any travel case. Make sure he takes it on his next trip. And if he carries loads of body hair like most dads do, you're in luck with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. This bad boy is designed with fathers in mind, featuring the Lawnmower Signature Lawnmower 5.0. This Father's Day is also the perfect time for your old man to stop stealing his wife's nail clippers and finally get a kit of his own that will last him a lifetime. The Shears 3.0 is the five-piece precision men's nail grooming kit that any father needs to stay on top of his self-care routine with professional grade stainless steel tools sized and styled for the task at hand and that set of underwear he got for christmas a decade ago that needs going get it upgraded and what better way than with manscaped boxes 2.0 the boxes 2.0 were designed with a simple mission make the most comfortable boxes a man could buy it starts with a dual pouch a dedicated space that cradles your stones in place with a perforated performance fabric for extra breathability and they are a game changer get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code show 20 at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com use the code show 20 never forget where you came from if you know what I mean, stop buying men shit presents. Happy Father's Day from Manscaped. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the FM Show. I'm your host Tony Jameson and joining me as always is my Eurovision winner, <laughs> RDF Tactics. Hello Aaron, how are you my man? Are you we well? Are- yeah, I'm well. I'm well. The missus isn't, so that's what's good. Yeah, that's what's happening in the household at the moment. But oh, mate. yeah, I'm well. I'm well. Been getting stuck into some scouting stuff. So mm-hmm. I almost say getting back into it. I don't think it's a getting back into it thing. It's just more so picking up where I left off. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. with the of the, the baby loss and stuff like that, and then trying to the financial stuff as well, trying to get back on track and that sort of stuff. Now I've been able to because obviously scouting is. It's free. I'm not working for anyone. So obviously now I've got that time again to do it. So I've been doing that. And yeah, been getting some feedback again, which is really nice. Like mm-hmm. on my WhatsApp, I got a message in the WhatsApp. I was like, oh, sugar. <laughs> it was a voice note as well. Okay. And it was like, yeah, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And I've like noticed that I've hit a different. So before I, I would do that sort of South America or whatever, but now they've noticed that I've switched my region and looking at now Bulgarian football. Sort of mm-hmm. Bulgarian, Slovakian, Croatia, Norway, those sort of places, yeah. You can find mm. some decent players over there. I like it, man. I like it. And what, what I like about your stuff as well is I like that you don't just stick to one thing. Like, you don't just have yeah. a Let's Play series. Like, that's all I've got. Like, on Twitch, all, <laughs> all, like, all, all I do is I, I do Twitch. I, I wanted to do YouTube. We've mentioned this loads, loads of times. Before. Yeah. I've got loads of great ideas for YouTube, but I don't have enough time to dedicate to yeah, yeah yeah and yeah, I'm not, yeah and i'm not 
I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough about it. Like, I don't know <laughs> what you know in terms of tactics. I don't know what you know in terms of, of real football because I don't watch a lot of real football. Yeah. But what you're doing is so much, is so different to what everyone else is doing. And you're blurring the lines of, of, of FM yeah. and, and real world. Yeah, and like, yeah, going, yeah. This is what happens in the real world. This is how you could implement it into FM. And, and you're not even just like just doing it as those two things you're nailing both things as well like which is think, impre- which is awesome to see I saw that. like the baffling bit so like there was a player today like some polish player and it's like before he's even seen my notes like he's saying things and i'm like i've literally got that in my notes as well but this is a professional scout and it's just like i'm li- and the soul that when he's read it he's like you put a love heart it was like yeah that's pretty decent yeah so i'm like obviously proud of myself and whatever but yeah and i think there's a liam henshaw as well he's a scout at hearts as well mm-hmm. and again like these people just popping up saying that you've definitely got the ability to do it and stuff and it's just like jesus because <laughs> for me again like it wasn't through education or anything it's just like come to me i wouldn't say come to me naturally i've always been like interested in it ever since i was young but that's mm-hmm. what it's like all of it's just i don't know if self-taught is the right word because i've been learning of what i've been seeing as well but like i've been reading and whatever what other scouts are doing posting Obviously, whatever webinar I can find that's free online, mm-hmm. any courses or whatever. And then, yeah, you just sort of all apply to that. Some things sort of I knew and then like you see it and it's like confirmation. OK, I'm going on the right path sort of thing. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. yeah, pretty decent. No, I, I, honestly, man, like don't don't undersell what you're doing, because as as I say, like what the work you're putting in is not just like, oh, I scouted this lad on three yeah. YouTube videos and this is yeah. what I've come up with no, no. And, like, I, yes, and, I've, and I've posted it the same as everyone else has got on Twitter now yeah, yeah. Like sort of four little facts like you're doing proper like, analysis mate, yes, yes, they go go to the Bulgarian because it was Bulgarian Cup final mm-hmm. uh, the neighbour the kid where the kids go Bulgarian family they got their Bulgarian TV thing I, it's not on my TV I might as well just go over there mm-hmm. and watch it and then that yeah so that sort of thing as well I think obviously if I do go far on a journey and playing those sort of stuff back as well. That would be pretty interesting. Remind, remember, because I don't have the the tools that a professional scout has. I don't have like We Scout or Y Scout, whatever it's called, mm-hmm. where they can literally, I used to have it, but it's very expensive now. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, they obviously have that sort of thing. So they can see a name and then instantly blah, 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 blah. Whereas me, it's just like, I really have to search for it. Even like doing a due, di- due diligence on a player, that's mm-hmm. my favorite bit. It's not really watching them and their ability is how they are as a person mm-hmm. and then you've got like i was doing a brazilian one and literally the whole day i was just reading about his background the whole day talking about how he used to sleep understand uh when he used to travel because the travel was too fast so he never used to go home he just mm-hmm. used to sleep under the stands and stuff and then covid hit and then now he was a bricklayer santos gave him a chance he's now in ludogrets just banging in goals for fun that sort of thing and just like he's He's that sort of person, yeah. And then he missed the penalty in the cup final. Literally the last minute, the last kick of the game, Tony. So oh. I'm I'm rooting for the team that's winning, right? Because yeah. they've got like three or four players. And they're mm-hmm. young players as well. A couple of players from Nigeria. <laughs> but then this guy comes on, instantly scores. So like it's 3 2. So I'm like, well, it's a win win. He's got his goal. He's playing well as well. Yeah. And then the penalty last minute, I see him stepping up. I'm like, I mean, it's nasty if he scores because I'm putting that in the scout report, but also yeah, composure. Yeah. Twenty, yeah, because this team as well, like it will be their their uh, ticket to Europe as well to Europe mm-hmm. uh, European Conference League. So I kind of what I was kind of rooting for them. Ludogorets are already the champions, so they're already in Europe. So I'm kind of rooting mm-hmm. for Boltev, yeah, and then yeah, then he came. He's doing his little Brazilian step up thing and then just smashed over the bar, and I was like, but instantly because now I remember what he's been through. I'm like, oh, he's gonna recover from that. So he's gonna pick himself back up. Yeah. So now I'm intrigued, like next game, how you're performing, that sort of stuff. I think, and then they'll be again added to the database. Or I think you've bought in even more, like you know, it shows it shows a level of resilience. It shows like yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, yeah. not just gonna go inward. Um, speaking of, of moments like that, I, mean, I know we don't normally talk a lot about about real football, but um, <laughs> I saw something on on Twitter today, and it was the Turkish second division, I believe. I don't oh, know if you've seen this clip. God, I've seen the goalkeeper. It. The yeah, 90th minute, yeah, he, gets, yeah. he gets yellow carded for coming off his line. He saves the penalty. He gets yellow carded for coming off his line. So, obviously, all hell breaks loose. And then it's like, right, retake the penalty. They take it again. He saves it again, but he's come off his line again. So, he's <laughs> sent off. And then they stick the goal, the defender in goals. And they go, right, 
here's what you go, oh, you're goalkeeper, yeah. what are you going to do? And defender saves the penalty. <laughs> this, is, this is brilliant. Yeah. Oh, imagine, imagine, if that had, imagine if that happened on your game, you'd be fucking going wild, wouldn't you? You'd be like, Argh. that's the thing, like, it's that sort of drama, okay, you, you kind of do get that drama in the Premier League, but sometimes I feel when you're watching these sort of football leagues, like, the drama sometimes can just be mental. Even the penalty last, like, I, we're watching like 20 replays and we're like, where is the penalty? It's in the last kick of the game as well. They've gone to VAR and it's like, where is the penalty? Everyone's just looking around that. Like everyone's so baffled. So it's kind of justice done as well, but the keeper flew off his line. That should have been retaken. Mm. And, but it was the last kick of the game, so the referee already blew the whistle. So as soon as the ball's going over, he's blown the whistle. I, if they watched, they were talking about it in uh, Bulgarian, but obviously, I don't know. But <laughs> definitely, they were looking at that because they were zooming into the goalkeeper's steps and stuff like he was miles off his line when the penalty's taken. <laughs> so if you didn't, if the referee didn't blow the whistle, they probably would have went back here. Yeah, so it was a bit of drama last. Cup final drama. There's nothing better than cup final drama. Oh, I love it. I love a bit of drama because <laughs> we're getting towards the end of the season. This is when all the drama yeah, yeah, happens, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, uh, British seasons are starting to wrap up as well. I mean, at the time of recording, we've got um, championship playoffs are on the go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's oh, all... The Premier League is... as well, like the last day. If mm. Well... I don't know, man. I'm. I've been silent the whole time. So I'm time this whole stamping this, Aaron. Right? I'm time I'm, stamping I'm, this. Okay. We are winning the league. That's. I'm telling you. I don't know why something is telling me West mm-hmm. Ham are doing something bogey on the last day, <laughs> and we are going to win. I'm just feeling West Ham are of all teams. I don't know, Tony. I've just been keeping quiet. All the Arsenal fans are. Oh well, there goes league. Whatever. Blah blah blah. I'm like. Mate, we're gonna win on Sunday. It's I just not got like, to not like Arsenal fans to be a little bit over the top with these sorts of things, oh, is it? Like, oh, they tend no, to be man. really like it's chilled so annoying. out and calm. Like, <laughs> I think beginning of the season it was like a lot better. Like you can have a conversation now again towards the end of the season. It's just silly. Like you've, again, it's, we're gonna speak about it in a moment. But muting, you just got to mute these people on Twitter, man. Because <laughs> some of the things they come up with is just. It's just nonsense, oh, man. But you, but you know what? Right? I think now's the perfect time to talk about. Let's talk about that because <laughs> I've touched upon it already at the start of the show. I called you my Eurovision winner. Um, that is, of course, a reference to last week's show. If you haven't seen or watched last week's show, what are you doing? Like, You need to go back and watch that. If the title's put you off, please don't. It's Football Manager Does Eurovision. Pause <laughs> this episode right now. Go back and watch last week's episode. It's two hours long, right? Okay. And we are going to say, both of us are going to agree, that is the best episode we've done yeah, as a public it episode. It was it so was. much fun. We've gone back. We've basically, uh, we spent the night of Eurovision both texting each other going, are you watching this by any chance? Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, I am. Are you enjoying it? I am, actually. Yeah, um, I don't know. It was and the then, first song. The first song was just a banger. I was like, oh, yeah. This is what Eurovision is. <laughs> okay, okay, I get what this now. <laughs> and Graham Norton was pretty funny as well to oh, me. He nailed <laughs> it. Fair. Absolutely nailed yeah, it. Yeah, it was pretty you know? funny. So, so we, we thought, well, how about we concoct a sort of uh, an FM competition in the style of Eurovision, very, very loosely based, like that we would try and work out the best players from those um, representative nations in football yeah. manager, championship manager. And and I still maintain a week on. I think we picked the right winner. Like we, do, yeah, we yeah, yeah. have missed out some players, but we picked the right winner. And I posted a clip on on Twitter, which again you may have seen. It's of, of Aaron. <laughs> um, not entirely sure which of his favorite players was Norwegian. <laughs> was it John Carew? Was it John Anarisa? And um, there was a moment of discovery during that. Again, I'll let you go watch the clip to find out. And. Um, and a thank you, of course, to everyone who replies to to anything online or sees things yeah. and retweets and shares. Like honestly, that is like amazing for us. It helps spread the word of the show. We really appreciate it. Um, but a friend of ours, a certain Adam Cleary, who works for Four Four Two Magazine, so shout out to Adam Cleary uh, out there, responded to that tweet by saying, "Here's my favorite Norwegian player. And it was Daniel Brothen, which we'd uh, we'd forgotten to add in." Um, mm-hmm, definitely he forgotten, played yeah. for Bolton as well in real life. He was incredible <laughs> on the game. Um, so I was like, oh, so I text Aaron, going, hey, look, this, is, uh, this has worked out quite nicely. Cleary's got involved here. Um, and then what did you send me, Aaron? <laughs> so, so I was just getting a notification. I saw Alan Cleary, so straight away I got to my phone to see, oh, what's he saying? But now he's responded to a tweet that I can't see because I've muted a word. So yeah. obviously, I've again we're talking about beautiful words, silly Arsenal fans and stuff. So I'm like, 
what's what, what's he doing replying to one of these silly people's posts or whatever? And yeah, I've i muted the word Eurovision. So <laughs> all our social posts, I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> the clip, I didn't see the clip when it came out. I didn't see nothing when it came out because yeah, the word Eurovision was muted. Now this must have been when I first opened Twitter or something, and I must have wanted to see all the football football mm. stuff on my Twitter, and people were talking about the Eurovision, which obviously annoyed me at the time. And yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I think oh, that's that was fair, funny. Yeah, but, uh, um, that was... <laughs> but yes, as I say, no shout out to Clear. We are trying to get him on the show as well, by the way. So we are hoping to make that happen. So. um Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, call us, call us. Actually. <laughs> cool. I, know, you know, I know you're busy, you know, with like real life football happening. Um, <laughs> but when the season finishes, right, you've got nothing to do, right? Surely <laughs> get yourself in. Big football manager player. So he will, uh, he'll absolutely come on the show uh, and chat to us at some point. Um, uh, this week, again, we've not had a massive amount of time between recording the last episode and now. So I've not done a lot in Greece, I must admit, Aaron. I've not done a lot. I am. Um, yeah. oh, I tell you, we have done. We won our first Champions League match, our first actual Champions League league match. <laughs> we mentioned in the last episode the epic match that got us to the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unsurprisingly, we lost to Benfica 3-0, but we beat HJK Helsinki. So Ooh, there yeah. you go. We're, 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 we're dining at the top table. We got beat <laughs> off Napoli. <laughs> so only oh. only Real Madrid and Porto and oh, Chelsea no. and Monaco to go on Shakhtar Donetsk to go. So should be fine. <laughs> um, uh, it usually happens the opposite way for me, though. Like I will play a Juve or something. I'll win. And I'm like, oh, we've got a chance. Mm. And then I go to someone like thinking that that's a win. And then, yeah, just the most difficult game. Yeah, I feel like being, and I don't know whether this is just psychologically in my head, but I feel like being the underdog really suits me. Like, I'm I'm good like that, and I don't like being in the match where, yeah. I, where I'm expected to win. So I do tend to end up, like you say, they're in those matches where it's like, hey, we've gone and done this. Like, we've, we've got ourselves <laughs> a win, and we shouldn't have. But, yeah, I don't think anybody, no one really seemed to tell Benfica, that that was the situation. <laughs> they were very much like, we've come to beat you now. And I was like, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Thanks oh, for that. Um, and then Napoli, we we lost two one. So at least we gave a bit of a bit of a battle yeah, forward yeah, to that yeah. one. A bit respect. Um, and then the league, we've lost a couple of matches in the league now, which I feel even early in the season, have we maybe are we really gonna be up against it to finish second now? I think. <sighs> Um, so it feels like a strange season. Maybe, maybe one Does season of Champions one, League and then back to back to Europa after that. Those so. are a difficult one. I'm trying to think. Imagine you're a real real life football manager, right? Mm-hmm. Ten games in. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to use the Premier League, but just say like you're ten games in, and you've got a good chance of winning the league. I don't know whatever league you were in, mm-hmm. and then like. You've done all this preparation in the first ten games. You've already lost about three, four, and the other team competitors just like, "Then what do you do then?" Just like, obviously we've got to keep going, but the the mindset must be just so difficult to be in right there, man. It's it tough, isn't it? Because be. like theoretically, you could just tank the competition at that point, couldn't you? Like, <laughs> yeah. and and just refocus on stuff. And I guess that's, yeah. I mean, that could be a, an episode for discussion. I think. And I think we've maybe touched upon it briefly in, in previous episodes, but how do you prepare and focus for competitions? Like, yeah. if you're competing on three fronts, you know, how do you how do you rotate sufficiently to compete on three fronts? Or if you've got, you know, if you're battling to stay up in the division, but all of a sudden you end up on a cup run, where does your priorities go? Like, how do you start to to work that? You know, like. Yeah. Do you go, oh, the fans want a cup run, but they also want to stay in the division. Like, <laughs> whereas, of course, with, with us, it's like we need to go deeper in Europe for the coefficients. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, we could sort of bounce around in the league. As long as we finish fifth, it'll be fine. We'll be back in another European competition next season. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, like obviously after ten games, it's never the end of the world, but it's just gotta be like, ah. Oh. Like, surely the message at the beginning is like good start. Good start. Obviously the start does it never has to be perfect. Like you don't mm. have to win ten out of ten or a few draws in there as well. It doesn't mind. But if you've got like four losses and one of them to the rivals as well, 
oh, that's got to be. Yeah. Because I, I, like, I'm just thinking, like, in my head in Football Manager, when I'm playing it, especially, like, when you are in a league like Sweden or whatever, it just feels like you've just got now grind out the whole season and to, to go again sort of thing. Well, especially last year where we had a great season, AK had changed their manager, Panathinaikos had changed their manager. So we were sort of benefiting from those two teams yeah, not yeah, being yeah, in yeah, the yeah. mix. Olympiacos didn't slip at all. And it was a little <laughs> bit, it's a little bit like managing in France where you're waiting for PSG to slip. Oh, okay. And and like, this is not, it's it doesn't not matter how bad. good you are. It's not you bad. need PSG to slip up. <laughs> it's in order it's to always those it. games as well where they go like Marcy away and you're like, oh, I'm keeping a close eye on this one. This could be 4-0 yeah. PSG. You're like, <laughs> no or, chance. <laughs> or it's the weird one where where you play PSG, you beat them 4-0. Yeah, right? yeah. And then uh, you get to the end of the season and you go, how did they win the league by nine points? Like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what matches did I lose? <laughs> yeah, oh, man. But see, that happens a lot when I'm first. And I, this always happens. I don't know why. I just have this like, winning streak. And then it's sort of like you don't look at, you stop looking at the table because like, we're so far gone. We're so far gone. Mm. And then, like, you lose one or two, and then, like, that's fine. You look at the table. Oh, crap. <laughs> Mate, we, we <laughs> had it. What? We had it early doors. <laughs> so we're about maybe, like, 12 games in or something ish yeah. in the season. And and we were, we were second, looking fine, looking comfortable. And then the next, it uh, must have been about two games, no more than two games, and I'm sixth. I'm like, What's going on here? Yeah, but, but there is one point separates second and see that's sixth, the thing, yeah. and then eight, and then another two points takes you down to eight. Yeah, and I'm like, that's the thing. Oh, and then Olympiacos are like already on fifty points, and you're like, that's not even mathematically <laughs> possible. How are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, yeah, that's the yeah, that's just annoying. And then there's like all the Euro matches that go in as well, so you've got like games in hand. Oh, I yeah. don't understand how we always seem to play more games, even though we're in the same competition as everyone else. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sounding like Jurgen Klopp at this point. I'm complaining about the fixtures, but <laughs> I think ultimately it's down to me. Like, I, I, yeah. we, we've just got to do our thing, play our football, and, and hope that it's good enough. You know? That's the thing. Football world is just crazy, man. The football world. So, you, on one hand, you've got people talking about the fixture list, which I think is kind of fair, sort mm-hmm. of thing. But then on the other hand, it's like, Oh yeah, it would, it would be great if the Premier League had playoffs. So like, but you're just moaning about how many games are on. Like you're trying to add more games. It's just like, what is going on? Like yeah. you don't even. Some people just either playing both sides, or maybe your minds are doing trick. You're just seeing one person say something else, and there's another group saying something completely different. Mm. And obviously, it's just never going to please everyone that way, are you? You can't. No, no, you I, can't. And I think the more we do things like this, and the more we stream, and the more we talk to people, and the more guests we get on the show, the more we start to realize that you can't please everyone. Like it's yeah. physically impossible because everyone wants the game to be ever so slightly different. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think where that leads to is a very well timed segue <laughs> into this week's show. Okay, yeah. so before we do that, let's just quickly say a big thank you to new Patreons who have joined us over the last couple of weeks uh shout out for chris uh with a k by the way uh pfizer schliefer i hope i pronounced that one right and richard gore so welcome into the uh to the squad Ooh. you lot hope you're enjoying the extra bonus content where we give you an extra episode every single monday and um, aaron i don't know if you saw this week we dropped the nottingham comedy festival show from last year oh yes as part oh, of the yes. Mm-hmm. oh yes oh yes 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 yeah. so um i think that's probably the, the most requested um ex- extra show that we've yeah, had yeah, over yeah. the last year so, so that's now in there so that's part of uh of the bonus content and of course you can get access to everything from from, from day one all the back catalog is about 30 35 40 hours worth of extra bonus content yeah. in there um and there's going to be some announcements shortly about some things that you might want to keep your diaries free for. Yes. So if you want to be notified of all that information and to check out that extra fantastic bonus content, Aaron, how can they do so? Oh, they can sign up to the Patreon for as little as £3. Patreon.com forward slash the FM show pod. 
That's the one. And of course, thank you to everyone who has supported us on Patreon. We are talking then, therefore, right, about things to please people. And <laughs> if, for example, you were making a game that will be due out very soon, <laughs> do you reckon the, 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 the games manufacturers are maybe thinking, like, we should put some new things in, shouldn't we? <laughs> so if, for example, you were making FM25, which we presume is what the title of the game is going to be called, by the way, if <laughs> FM20... <it, it, laughs> essentially, what we're trying to work out is... What Soccer would you manager. Like <laughs> Soccer coach, 25. <laughs> yeah, see, football, football head coach. Football head coach, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, what would you like to see in FM25? I think it's something that, that I ask all of our guests on the Patreon episodes. So the question yeah. will be... It doesn't necessarily even have to be a wish list per se. It could even be something, a feature that's already there that mm -hmm. you would like to see spruced up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And and I've, I've come to realise that's what a lot of people want as well nowadays. It's They want the same game, sort of, but things... <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid. <laughs> they want the same games, but they want things to be done a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah. So they want, they want the squad planner, but they want the squad planner to be tweaked in certain mm -hmm. things. The same thing, the tactic screen, maybe not complete changes, but there's one or two things that could, that can obviously help improve the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's a fair comment, to be honest. It's not, yeah. it's not always, what was, what's the phrase? It's, it's evolution, not revolution. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah, need, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Like, so things yeah. like, for example, well, well, you know, things like the squad planner. Okay. Yeah. I love the idea of the squad planner, and I'm pretty sure you could go back to when we started talking about this when FM23 came out, and I was sitting going, I love the idea of a squad planner, and I will use that squad planner so much because it's a really smart idea. We've played FM23, we've played FM24. I still have a notepad with me. <laughs> okay? So the idea of the squad planner is brilliant, I love it. I love the fact that you can slot players in in accordance to your tactic. I love the fact you can see how it would look next year. I love the fact that you can add players from your shortlist to see where they'd fit in and around. Mm -hmm. But I only I don't use it. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not getting enough out of it to just so you... like and I need something else in there. But what else do I need? I don't know, like better access to it, baby. Mm. So, like, can you click on? I don't even actually know this once. I've got the game open. Can mm. you? Uh, I'm not even actually in a save. Can yeah. you click on a player's profile and then add them to your squad planner that way? Yeah. So if so on so when you're setting your team up, yeah, and down the side you got all the positions that you can add like for the filters. No. Like, oh, so I'm like saying yeah. like so you're scouting around or whatever, and you're in the player search, and you just click on the yeah. player. Right, so what you do, add him to shortlist, okay, then go into oh. your, your squad planner, and then when you go to add players, and it can be by best fit or by position, there's a, a drop down on there that says by shortlist, and it's literally every player that's on your shortlist can go into the squad planner, and then you can see where those players are going to line up. That's what so, I mean about access. Like, that's so, just, already, my head is just gone. Like, it's, like so I thought, me, I was in my head, like, just a button, boom, add to squad, like, I'm on the player's profile, and then view view and squad plan or whatever it is and then that's that's the rather thing. than that's having the thing. gone it's like rather than clicking four or five buttons i want it to be on i'm on the player's profile mm -hmm. boom i can just press something well if if we take that then as a thing right we take the squad plan out of it we take that as a thing what you've just said there yeah 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 we yeah. want to be able to yes yes and hopefully with something like unity it might be what how they can do it less clicks to get stuff done yeah See, I might be a bit contradictory here because I think I've played the game so much where a lot of the clicks, I don't realise how much I'm clicking. Mm -hmm. People say it on stream, like, rah, rah, like, how did you do that? And to me, it's like, I don't know, me, I'll just press like this and that. And then like, when I slow down, I was like, oh, it's actually like four or five clicks. But in my head, I'm just like, boom, 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 and it's just done, and I just press continue sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's it's like when, when we send tweets out, people don't want to click the tweet, then read the next bit where the link is, and the yes, next bit, and the next yes, bit. Yes, yes, but, yes, yes. But yes, we yes, know yes. we have to put the link in the next tweet because otherwise Twitter doesn't show the, the tweet. Yeah, yeah, It, it yeah, crunches yeah. it down. So we don't want to have to put the link in the next tweet. But if yeah, you're designing yeah, the video, yeah, yeah. you don't have to have the thing that you want seven or eight clicks in. You should be able to have a 
be able to click on it yeah. and and be able to then jump into that next thing. So if, for example, using the squad planner, I love the idea that you can prep lists of targets. Now, what I would suggest is maybe more advantageous, and some people might suggest this is part of the recruitment focus. So again, it all ties in together and how it tweaks and how it should work nicely. If at the end of the year, I'm focusing on signing a left back, for example, okay? I want to have my number one, number two, number three, number four target left backs, okay? And I want that, again, I'm going to contradict myself as well. I want oh that on a separate God. screen, right? See, oh, like my God. The all or nothing documentaries where they're like, right, these are the players we want. I want that. And then I want to see, right, okay, if we've got, if maybe if my midfielder goes, then I want these sorts of players to be the backups, which I suppose you could technically use with the squad planner, but I just want it cleaner. Yeah, see, oh my God, in my head, sense? I had this. I'm like, so I remember, oh, I can't remember his name, it's so bad. And they, they literally had some sort of course. It wasn't even a course. It was just them speaking, sort of a Q&A thing in Cheltenham. I think mm -hmm. I spoke to you, mentioned you about it. I can't yeah. remember his name. The guy from Liverpool. And it was like, when they had targets, and it was mm -hmm. like, they had a list. <laughs> like, nope, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nope, sort of thing. But there was a list of top five sort mm -hmm. of things. So top five left wingers, top five right wingers. And for whatever reason, or your top target might go. But I, if I want to use my director of football, because I don't think we actually use that enough in the no, game. Oh, that's another thing wish, we're going to start talking yeah, about. Yeah, I wish I could just send him a list that mm -hmm. these are the strikers I want and this, and this priority list. But in the game, I'm pretty sure you can do that. So you do have a, again, you might not have known this and it doesn't even mm -hmm. look clean or whatever it is, but I'm pretty sure. Like when I was thinking it in my head, like, yeah, that should be in the game. I was like, wait, I think that's already in the game. You can set your director of football targets. You can actually right. set them targets. Okay. Yeah, but again, how it works and how, yeah, it might be a bit different to what we want in the mm -hmm. game. But yeah, I was thinking that myself again, like. Because I think with the director of football, what would be really interesting on that is if you've got, and we'll use this scenario as well, you've got your list of targets, right? You've got your five players that you think are like really good. Mm -hmm. But on your shortlist, you've got someone who you're maybe not thinking, you're maybe not thinking you need a centre back, right? Mm. But all of a sudden, a really good centre back becomes available. Yeah. There should be like greater, greater common sense from the director of football or from your scouts yeah, that yeah. starts to say, hey, you realize this guy's like unsettled? Like he might. They, they, they might be ready yeah, for an yeah, offer, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, 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 almost yeah. sort of prime you for, right, they might be willing to move. They're going for someone else. And I know there's kind of like little bits in that now yeah, where so I'm saying, yeah, you click on it and it says FM, un, un, right? unlikely to move due to funds or need to generate funds before they make the sale. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think what, what it's lacking and what I think this episode might have as an overarching theme is that immersion. And whether this comes yeah. from us because we're creators and we're trying to tell stories on stream, I want more of that. I want more of that creating moments, creating, oh my God, we, hey, we can maybe go for this guy. Like, you know, maybe this player's available after all. And then yeah, you yeah, reshuffle yeah, yeah. your pack in terms of like, well, I'll tell you what, let's not, like, do we, do we gamble? Do we go for the position that we desperately need? Or do we bank on, hey, this striker's available, this defender's available? Like, it's not our number one target, but we can't afford to be left behind. <laughs> like, and almost make you make those decisions feel like they matter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Have I, I explained I, that properly? Yeah, I think I think you have, but I'm, like in my head, now, every time we have this sort of conversation, like that's why I go silent because in my head, I'm like, I'm thinking of something else <laughs> almost yeah. instantly. Yeah. But even like agents and the way agents are and the way agents work, I know they added that ask agent availability mm. thing in the game which i i use pretty much all the I use, time I use, a, I use a lot actually i must have been yeah, <laughs> yeah mm. i use it all the time but i don't know i just want things that like them being more involved in mm -hmm. certain things giving me more information less information or <laughs> whatever it mm. is about a player and where mm. he wants to be and because agents have connections in real life as well mm. and it's just you know what i mean like wolves wanted to sign portuguese players only and there was a there was an agent that 
kept recommending Wolves because they knew Real Madrid might want Galacticos only. So there'll be an agent that just, look, this is a high profile player on my agency or whatever it is. And you, again, you, so, so you could have that then, sort of building those relationships up. And I know it's in there to an yeah. extent. And, but that it's not to the forefront. Like it's almost, not almost a catchphrase of the of this <laughs> episode. It's in there to an extent, right? Yeah. But you you sign a contract for a player. He's been with you a couple of seasons. You might. It would be real. The, surely the agent at that point would be like, "Hey, look, we we work well together. Like, yeah. Just just so you know, I know you're after a, a left back. Like, and I know that this guy is a left back. And, yeah. And he's. We could make something happen. Like, do you want to have a chat like, with you? <clears throat> yeah. Like, a bit of role play. Like, th- yeah, this is what I was trying to get to. So, mm. a bit of role play, a little bit of trickery. I was watching L- someone play L.A. Noir. So, it's a bit of an old L.A. game. L.A. Noir, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And where he had to, like, it's kind of like it works your brain a little bit and you kind of find, got to figure out the next step sort of thing. Mm. But I want the agent to throw span on the works. It's like, look, this agent, <laughs> this player wants to come to you, but West Ham are interested. Yeah. West Ham are not. But they're telling you that. Yeah, it's all, yeah. Like their sort bluff. Of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's hold, he's holding out for Real Madrid. Like, yeah, yeah. Because really and truly, I shouldn't know exactly what teams are interested in a player. I don't think a, a manager will really, unless the agent is giving them that information. Like the yeah. agent will be giving you the information. Otherwise, I'm not going to be a coach of whatever team and know exactly what team's interested in that player, that player, that player. I suppose, thing, so. I suppose at some point there is that moment when they say the little item flashes up of, oh, he's been offered a contract at such and such. He's willing to renegotiate with you to get the deal over the line. That's yeah. great. Like, Cause that's yeah, what agents yeah. would do. Agents would come back and See, push that, for a bit more money. In the game again, that, but it, that message certainly doesn't come up enough. But by it's the way, infrequent, isn't it? Yeah. It, and, but again, it, that can happen and so, sort of in different ways as well. It doesn't always mm-hmm. have to be a fact that that, so that message only comes up if for a fact, Milan have offered the player the contract. Now they come back to you. But mm. I want it to be sort of like calling your bluff, like testing you in yeah. your decision sort of thing. Like, are you going to bump up, boost this price or are you just going to leave it and mm. let the player decide sort of thing? Mm-hmm. And that sort of, yeah, just that sort of bit of role playing. I don't know, when in the, in the negotiations. Like, is there certain things you, you think... could... Sorry, I was going to say, is there certain things you could say to the player to help like sort of get his interest levels up? Yeah, you just know? Uh, just sort of like the player path. Like we mm. spoke about that a little bit with the youth thing, but oh, like the pathway, player path. Yeah. That's a, I've, Again, I've it's down. in the game, but mm-hmm. it's not. It's not. I don't think it's well done. Like you've got the thing right. You got this year. I'm giving you squad player. Next year, regular star. Next year, important player. That's basically setting the player's pathway, sort of thing. But again, I just, I think it could be done better, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's I'm finding it hard to explain how to do it better. Exactly, but well, it's it's not for us to work out how Aaron. It's for it's it's for us to it's for us to offer these as ideas and say, yeah, you know what, this would really improve the game. This would make yeah. things work better. The player pathway, I think, is a brilliant. Even one, if we give way. you a timer, like a timer in negotiations, like mm-hmm. if if I know uh, an agent is impatient, give me a timer. That's like I've got two minutes to figure this out. Ooh, if okay. a if a nigga, if an agent is more patient. I could just sit there and think about things for five minutes. You know what I mean? That that sort of thing. I think because ah, I'm not FM is not too easy, but I think there's certain things in the game that could be made more difficult. I don't feel now football manager should be at a point where I can pick any team and just go for one the kid, and they're just gonna come mm. to me because they're gonna come to me, sort of thing. Yeah, there should be things that are blocking it, like. If I'm, I don't know, a team that's playing direct football, that player might not just want to join you simply of basing mm. like your style of play and that sort of thing. And I'm not saying like make everything difficult, super difficult, where now it's like very difficult to buy players. Obviously, mm. not to that extent, but at the same time, I don't think we should be able just to buy 20 players a season just because we want to and that sort of thing and yeah. whoever we want to. I think the, the level of realism, and I suppose you could argue that with FM, there is no such thing as realism because yeah. it goes very, very quickly. Like you play a Park to Prem style season, non-league to legend style save, taking Geisley to the Champions yeah, yeah. League or Wexford to the Champions League <laughs> is not realistic. So of course, yeah. 
in that sense, the game is too easy because it wouldn't happen in real life. We've argued on episodes before saying, well, if we wanted to make it realistic, nobody would mm-hmm. play it because mm-hmm. you wouldn't win anything. Like it would be too exactly, hard. Yeah. There's no reward in the game at that point. But I like the idea of this agents being, if they're impatient, like in my head, I figured rather than the sort of, not necessarily like a timer because, you know, like when you sort of, you, you, you ask the agent about negotiations and say, right, this is what he wants. Yeah. And then they follow it up a couple of days later. An impatient agent, for example, rather than following up, might just have the, well, you're clearly not interested, so we've take so the player's no longer interested. Yeah, 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 and he yeah, just yeah. takes that option away from you straight away. And you're like, no, hang on, no, no. I, I wanted yeah, to think yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> and the agents just, block, just scuppered the move there and then, yeah. which again makes you think to go, oh, okay, right, well, what's my next move then? Because I kind yeah. of thought I was going after that striker, which is what would happen in real life. Yeah, or, but that's or sort you, of the merchant, you offer your though, first like... deal, you offer your first contract, and then they go, no, no, that's not yeah. it at all. We said it's this, and it's, and until you come back, no. It's just like, let's be honest, there's so many great players in football. Like, it is, I just like, I don't know the idea of you being able just to go, I want that person, that person, that person, that person, sort of thing. Mm. I think that could be tuned down a little bit, not completely, mm. not drastically. But just tune down a little bit. Like, like, let's say, like, I shouldn't be able to get Endrick, Esteval, and Kendrick Pires because they all, you could say, argue, they all play in the same position. Mm. Now, if I've bought Endrick, why is Esteval also going to come up and be a breakthrough prospect? And then why is the next one going to come through as a breakthrough prospect? They're all accepting the same contract. And again, the, a, the, the players must be thinking at some sort of stage, like, <laughs> are you sure? Yeah. Like, even questioning you, are you sure? Like, if I say, let's say I've got Saka as an important player and now I'm getting a new a, a new right winger and I'm, I'm saying, look, in two years, you're also going to be an important player. Why don't he come back to me and be like, are you sure? Because at the moment you have Saka, who's your important player, blah, 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 blah. And it's just making you think sort of thing. And then if you try and reduce that now, it's like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not interested sort of thing. Yeah, because th- I've seen a few times players where you try to buy someone in this and they say I want to be a first team player when that player follows yeah, yeah, yeah 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 but you're looking going think- but this guy's only, I've only had this guy for two years he's going nowhere <laughs> like I've brought you in to rotate yeah. with this guy like I'm not so I've, and I think football manager have these things that what we're requesting I think they have this in the game but it's very like in the background and it doesn't have the, a great effect or if it has an effect at mm. all sort of thing because like a promise, right? You could just break the promise and keep going, sort of thing. Mm, yeah. Do you know, yeah. So I yeah. don't know. So even that, you can that can continue in the game. Like, I don't mind that. It's stopping, sometimes stopping you to even getting to that point because you might not even be able to buy it. I wonder whether or not, and again, this is this is just a, a, a theory, really. You it can you can stop yourself from yeah. doing this and i know that that there's but a certain level that of personal responsibility thing. that yeah that but comes that with immersion it. i i wonder whether how would you be able to play where the board because the board might turn around and say okay right you sign a player and then after it the board say we now think we have too many players in this position yeah is there not a step where the board should consider blocking the transfer even before it's happened like when you've put the bid in the board should be saying we don't need another player in this position if you mm. want to play if you want this player you have to sell someone first and because you don't, don't need head, yeah. six center backs like that's too much like yeah, we will not say, sanction yeah. this move <laughs> exactly unless yeah. you can you can guarantee us this move is absolutely necessary and the club yeah. shouldn't always agree to it in the same way that they don't agree but to it's... To you know, affiliate clubs or, or expansion of, of youth and all that sort of stuff that would be more interaction yeah. that would make it's it difficult for football manager, though, right? Because they, they want people to play the game in whatever way they want mm-hmm. to play the game. People just want to open up the laptop because they've got two hours in the evening yeah, and just get it done. And and play, yeah, get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. I just generally think some of these requests will just make the game better, sort mm-hmm. of thing, and maybe make people want to play the game more rather than drive them away. 
if yeah. you throw them little scenarios, like like little things that should make you think for a second, mm-hmm. like because in Football Manager, there's too many times we click buttons because we know that's the right answer and we know yeah. that's the way to do it, sort of thing. Even if it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Like mm-hmm. I could be up, go to Manchester United, be two new up at Old Trafford. We all know that saying, "Oh, I'm happy, keep it up" is dangerous. But in yeah. real life, you 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 would you would say that. You would obviously point out, like, like whatever, don't be complacent, but you're also going to tell them, look, I'm happy. You're not going to be co- going into the change room and saying anything else other than that. So yeah. I think, but we know because of how Foot Manager works. And it doesn't matter. Sometimes, again, sometimes I just want maybe your manager profile as well, what you said at the beginning of the game, to have more of an effect in this bit here. It's time to say hello to the newest sponsor of the FM show. Everybody, say hello to full-time prints. Full-time prints offer a variety of prints to give football fans the chance to remember their favourite football moments forever. They currently offer a range of goals, team sheets, commentary and league tables. Prints are available in A4 through to A1 and can be bought with or without a frame. It makes the perfect gift for occasions such as Christmas, birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day, just because presents like Seriously, this is the perfect gift for every football fan. You want to go on the website, browse what they've got. They've got so many things to choose from, whether it's teams, European teams, international teams, moments that happen. And if you can't find something you like, you can even do a custom request. You can create anything you've seen yourself. Maybe you've seen a goal you want to relive. You can have that. Maybe you want to relive the first match you ever attended. Or maybe, if you're a Football Manager fan, you might want to do a custom one just designed for Football Manager that immortalises your save forever. You can have a print done that has all your trophies, the entirety of the save, the key moments. Maybe you want to relive the Champions League final and have your team sheet and everything on there. You can do that with full-time prints. I'm thinking I'll get myself one and I'm going to put it right behind my head in my office just behind here. And as a little sweetener for you, we've got a little bit of discount to help you out here. So use the code THEFMSHOW. We'll get you 10% off your entire order. Go to fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code THEFMSHOW. That's 10% off your entire order. And there's free shipping on orders over 50 quid. So go get yourself a full-time print. Immortalize that football manager save. Let us know what you've got. Visit fulltimeprints.com. Use the discount code the FM Show. Get yourself ten percent off, and remember, free shipping on orders over fifty quid. I think as well, if you're two nil up at, at Old Trafford, yeah, you'd be sat in the dressing room going, "This is brilliant, right?" But we have to be compact for the first ten minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, are yeah. going to come at us. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you try and do that in FM, it's two two within ten minutes because. <laughs> The game isn't set up for you to to, to soak up that pressure. The game rewards you for attack and play. And we've discussed this on so many episodes and tactics garages Mm -hmm. that we want to get defensive football, counter-attacking football to be more effective because it is very effective in real life. And bigger teams play a counter-attacking style. Man, you was, could argue Arsenal, Man United historically we were a counter-attacking team. Even but we went to—I was about to say—we went to Old Trafford and we weren't no high pressing. We was literally yeah, happy just to sit back in, <laughs> literally the whole half. Everyone, all the fans were like, "Yeah, this is Arsenal." Because my yeah. first time, obviously, is like, "Yeah, this is Arsenal." <laughs> sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. yeah. V- Villa sat back against Man against Man City. Yeah. Beat Man City at, at Villa Park. Yeah, you yeah. Because you can't just gag and press against everybody. There's got to yeah. be some sort of variation of tactics and styles that do influence the match. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say about shouts, right, in-game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this used to happen before, or if it happens now. Like, shouts should tweak your tactic. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I'm telling my team to go for it, I shouldn't have to use that shout, then go into my tactics and start changing buttons. It should be go for it or keep tight sort of means yeah. reduce your pressing intensity, that sort of so, thing. Okay. I think shout so, should be sort of linked to your tactic as well. Let, let's go with this then. So this could actually work for beginners as well, because a lot yes. of what we're talking about yes, yes, is, yes, is, yes. For, is very much come from the opinion of, of two people who've played football manager for 30 years, 
right? Yeah. Now, what I like, because we don't want to alienate anyone who's brand new to the game going, oh my God, this is like far too much. I don't need this <laughs> level of, of stuff. I just want to get on and play five matches because I've only got an hour while the kids are asleep, yeah. right? If you have those shouts linked to your tactics, so press on, high press, <gasps> it, it prays, yeah, yeah, drop yes, back yes, a little yes, bit, yes, yeah? yes, yes. then all of a sudden it takes any need for you to have to really tweak with the tactic. It instantly yeah. makes you go from balance to positive, from balance to cautious. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you want to get in and really tweak it, then you get in and you can do a bit of hands on. But the shouts themselves will adapt your tactic ever so slightly. Yeah. So if you're newer to the game, you don't have to say, right, sit tight. Actually, what does that mean? Like, what do I need to yeah, do? Yeah. What do I need and to do? You know funny? To get those players to sit tight. There was me, FM Grasshopper. I can't remember the part. I think it must have been Musterman. Yeah, mm. Musterman. And we we're talking about Gegenpress, right? Like, mm -hmm. Gegenpress is fine. What we should have, though, is a button. Because no team presses or gagging presses for 90 minutes. We yeah. should have a button where we can visibly see the effects as well of our teams draining out. And you have this button of a cool off period where your yeah. team then cools off their gagging press or whatever it is, their mm -hmm. tactic, the intensity of the tactic for a moment. There's going to be certain periods in the game that obviously your assistant manager might feel it and recommend it to you again through your little bottom i don't where is it in the map well, well, the, thing, the, the, tab, the tablet's the only there on 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 uh on skins that have been designed by third parties oh, yeah. as well so that's something that we don't know what's even going to happen because we've got a brand new ui yeah and we don't at the time of recording have any skinners <laughs> who know exactly what the ui looks like and therefore starting to make their skins that was F that was a good so we've that got was a no good idea <laughs> That also stops the people saying, oh, but no team gig and presses for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. That also stops people saying that. And it's like, yeah. Like a little power pretty... booster. Yeah, like a, just maybe, a button. Maybe just like an intensity up. bar. An intensity bar just to top. And, like, and, it, and it, you can feel it peaking. And yeah, then you, yeah, then yeah. you can sort of like drop it back. And I know it's not, again, maybe it's, you know, how how, how would they know? Yeah, but it's but just these uh, teams know, don't they? Like they do know, yeah. They, they visualize it. We need something, some sort of visual representation on the screen. I think that's what I'm looking for. Like, I can't, how do I explain the stuff? It's so difficult. Like, I need to see a different game so I can show you like these little bars and stuff. Like, this is what I mean about negotiations. Like, mm -hmm. a negotiation bar where, like, your target is to get it to complete, but. Let's say you say 50 grand and it, it reduces a little bit the higher you go, that you can see the bar and you're getting mm. closer to the to what that is actually wanted in that moment from the agent and the player and that sort of stuff. Mm. Like just those so I think those things make the game more immersive. And that's what I was talking about with the timer as well. Like if you've got something actually running down the clock, you can see like a nice little graphic of a clock mm. just running down as you're in your uh, contract negotiations. That would be I think handy it just as well. Makes it just makes the game maybe physically visibly better. I can just imagine viewers as well. Maybe this is a bit selfish again because we're content creators. I, I mean, think. I don't know. Sorry, I was going to say content I think, of the game is better. I as think well. tie those two ideas together. I think the visual, the visual bar of negotiation and a timer adds a little bit more pressure to get a deal done. That's like, what I mean. Like it makes you involved. That like you're now involved. Getting this done because yeah. I think the transfer system needs an overhaul as well. Yeah, like, I and don't it's think again, it's as... I think it's not to force you to pay anyway. It's just, there's nothing stopping you from just suggesting what you do now in football manager. Sometimes you just suggest what the agent wants, but if you actually want to do negotiations, as actually negotiate, then I think that's where that this sort of thing mm. comes useful in 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 a game. Mm. I think that the transfer system as it is at the minute is the problems lie. In... Being too realistic. <laughs> I don't know if Make it, it more gamey. I don't know if it like, is. I think that's what I, they I want think... to do. Cause I didn't like the, the transfer room or whatever that company is and that sort of stuff. Like it's like you can see it gearing towards more realism. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's losing that gamey effect. I think, sort of. I think it's very gamey at the minute, the, the transfer system. Very, very gamey because you can overspend your transfer budget by just dropping all oh, your yeah. installments yeah and i know stuff. what you mean oh yeah okay so that's far too gamey like a real life football club would probably go 
we can't afford to do this even over even the way we're yeah. trying to spread but these payments. It's, like, it's more, not it's not more like do visual it. representation and stuff. I think like it's yeah. just looks too spreadsheety maybe and yeah. less me if that's yeah like that makes sense. I, I think yeah. the, I think what, I, what I'm what I'm thinking about is the actual experience of a transfer. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Is very gamey because we all know yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If a player is 20 million quid, well, we'll just spread the payments and we oh, it never yeah. really comes out of our imaginary pot, pot of money. And it's somewhere, and you could make an argument that football clubs live like that in the real world, but there's got to become a point when the, the AI understands man. that you can't keep buying players like this, it won't let you do it, you're not going to have the money to do it. Yeah. So, that's got to there's got to be more pressing for players justification for signing players come on we need to get this player can we have the money for it is there any way we can about, try and get this done just solve it clubs personality or the owners yeah. so brighton they're just not gonna accept no like if you want our wonder kid you you're paying over the price for well, our this wonder. was what i was about to get to because everyone kicks off Despite the fact that they, they, they will, they're the ones that will say you spread all transfers over 36 months, <laughs> right? And all with like bonuses that they're never ever going to achieve. They're also the same people who complain that, oh my God, this club wants 56 million pounds for a player who's oh, valued yeah, at 5 yeah, million yeah, quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without understanding that because they want 56 million pounds, that's a very clear indication that that club do not want to sell that player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, see, again, the see, if that's the case, again, the is that's that's not known to people, right? Because what all we're seeing is a market value. Yeah, that's a problem, and now a lot of it's us are triggered as like, this, why yeah. is he that value and he's that value? But the game doesn't... Like, if we went into negotiations and be like, the agent's like, this club really prefer not to sell this player. This mm. is why he's priced this way. Like, you just got yeah. either a value, a value or you've got not for sale sort of thing. Yeah, because when you had Grealish... Going yeah, to Man yeah. City and Declan Rice going to Arsenal, you get fans of the clubs going, he's not worth 100 million quid. <laughs> but without the understanding of, yeah, 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 yeah. but that player is worth 100 million pounds to the selling club yeah. because they have to replace him, right? Yeah. And that the player is worth 100 million pounds to the buying club, to buy a club. because they <laughs> see 100 million pounds worth of value in yeah. that player. And what I'd like to see. This is really making it more niche and more difficult. But if you do sell a player for 100 million quid, I think it needs to be a little bit more tricky to replace them. And when you start looking for a player who's in the same position, all of a sudden those players' values have maybe gone up by about 5 million or 10 million yeah. pounds because the they clubs know now know you've got 100 million quid and you're more yeah, desperate yeah, to buy those yeah, players. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that would add a massive sense of jeopardy to it, wouldn't it? No, oh, that'll be it's, it's these things, and I don't. In my head, it doesn't make the game like force anyone to play differently. It's just it's these things can be either in the game. So like the Jack Greek, like like you're saying, selling that should just be a thing anyway. Like I don't think anyone should complain that that's happening. Like the clubs now know you're in desperate need to buy a player, and sometimes I actually find it. I don't know if this is you. Sometimes I find it easier to buy players on deadline day rather than more difficult. Yeah. Because they accept less money, don't they? Like, yeah, yeah, I thought it was just me. Like, the amount of times I've told people, like, I'm just going to wait for the deadline day because for some odd reason, like, people's value can just Just want them off the books, don't they? Or they they just accept, like, a low offer bid or whatever it is. And it's just like... I've I've got a thing. If I can't sign a player on loan at the start of the season, I go back in on deadline day and I get the zero wages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't have to pay the silly monthly fee. And it's like... We could have done this months ago. Like <laughs> the, the, the loan one is that's the more annoying. Yeah, mm. it's like when you want them at the beginning of the season, and it's just they're asking for ridiculous, and you check back on bo- <laughs> on Boxing Day on deadline day, and it's just like, huh? You're asking for no money? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one's that one's a bit annoying. That one's a bit annoying. Yeah, mm. but things yeah. like that, like deadline day, just <laughs> just deadline day, and the man's like, I want your player, and the man should just say absolutely not. But that should be understandable because that's just football. Like I don't feel. We're, we're taking anything away from people by doing that. It's that's just football, and that's just how it should. Work. In my head, it's just the way it should work. Like your deadline day, especially with now Foot Manager got the deadline day feature. Like it should just all just 
take have this, I don't know, a massive glow up. A massive glow up. Make mm. the game not difficult. But just no. make it fresh. Make it yeah, feel yeah, fresh. Yeah. Like you've got make it a great. But a game chance. like games have cha- like I think Four Managers are really one of the only games that I just feel doesn't have that. Like it's got so much freedom to allow you to play in any way you want to play, mm-hmm. and it doesn't really have a challenge where. Well, that that's a good point. Then, so do you think for all it can maybe be, that's what people mean is FM for all it can be. Does FM lack direction? In terms of its Possibly. game mode, like there is just, Possibly. there is so like, no just like thing, any really. game. Just like let's say you're playing WWE or whatever it's called now, and you're playing mm-hmm. career mode. There's going to be certain things in the game where you don't have the freedom to do what you want. Like you quite have to beat the boss or whatever it is in a yeah. certain way. Like do, like a game just sometimes she will just throw you a challenge. Where in Football Manager, I don't know, challenge sometimes might come in the match rather than all these other background stuff. But mm-hmm. I don't. Know, I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's very difficult to really explain. Does FM need two that. game modes, do you reckon? Well, I did suggest like there could be, again, it's going to be lots of coding and lots of stuff that I don't know or we or know it... necessarily. But even mm-hmm. my thing, it's just like, I remember FIFA, FIFA in career mode had this thing where the transfer period, you can have it loose where everyone around, the, people just buying players, you can have it, or, or you can have it strict. Where now it's more difficult to buy players, and I think that maybe Football Manager can have that sort of option where, if you are one of those guys that's only got two hours in the evening, then you could use the loose option where it's a bit easier, a bit fluid for you in the transfer system. Whereas if you're picking a different one, a more strict version, where again now you have to kind of take notice of what the agent's doing and that sort of stuff, the direction that your club wants to go in. And what direction the player wants to go in, and that sort of thing. Because the reason I ask is obviously when you start the game up in FM24, you've got the three game worlds modes, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is there a way they could expand upon that for FM25? Is it potentially a little teaser to sort of see if it was popular or not? Because you could just do the standard game mode, which we've always had, which is these are the players that start wherever they are, but on the July the 1st when the game starts, all those players are at the club and you've still got your summer transfer money and you can do whatever you want, okay? You've then got the real world system, which is player transfers drop in as they would have done in real life. So make yeah. that your realistic game mode so everything's a little bit more realistic. So your transfers might be a little bit more more difficult. Your training might have to be a little bit more precise. Your tactics might have to be a bit more precise you have to be more hands-on or you have the rewrite history mode where nothing's happened. And that's more of a sort of, I'm going to use the word fantasy mode, like a bit more FIFA, a bit more gamey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anything goes and it's a bit easier. It's a bit freer. You can sort of like, for more of the casual player possibly, like could you maybe do it that way? That would be a bit. It feels like they've already set up the starting points. Yeah. I think, again, because it's all about the coding and stuff, right? I don't know how, yeah. But I'm sorry, because I just went into Foot Manager Mobile and it's just like, Mm. I've already, I've even started a game and I've got three different things. I've got career, challenge and my club. But in challenge, you've got injury crisis, the Invincibles, unrest at home. You can't win anything with a kid. Like this sort of stuff, in my opinion, it's just going to be so cool on on the PC mode. Mm. Like that sort of stuff. You could even add that into your long-term saves or you could just have a challenge save. They, actually, used to, like, they used to have that back in the day, though, didn't they? I'm sure they did. Or am I thinking of Maybe some... they took taking it away because people weren't using it, but I just feel, I don't yeah. know, when now we're in that that Twitch era, though, like and YouTube era, mm-hmm. like, these yeah. things will absolutely boom. And, and, and maybe it just wasn't people, done. People like achievements, don't they? Achievements, like, cause, yeah. Because I suppose the, you could you could say as well, do, how many of us actually complete Football Manager? Here, here we are. Look, more stuff. Mm-hmm. So I've I've used career mode, and before again, before I've started the save, I've got more. Um, these are unlockables now. So again, mm-hmm. what you're talking about achievements? These yeah. are unlockable things that I haven't unlocked yet. So I have mm-hmm. to play the game to unlock it. But there's abolish transfer windows, remove loan restrictions, abolish work permits, rich benefactor becomes unsackable. Like again, these things can be in the actual game itself i feel 
mm, opening it up to different people who like to play different ways. I yeah, mean, yeah, rather than all of right. us playing the same game, but finding different ways to play within that same game. Because I, I think that's where we're coming across little issues, right? Because then, I don't know, Work the Space is doing his role to part to Prem, and then there's going to be certain things that sort of ruin his immersion within the mm. game. And then someone else is going to be doing a game mode where that's not an issue, but something else is sort of ruining the immersion in the game sort of thing. Mm. So, like, it, I don't know. <laughs> People run out of ideas as well, don't they? Like people yeah. ask, you know, what what what's a good save idea? What's a good save idea? What's a good save idea? Like video Trying creators, to to content creators, there's only so many experiments that people can come up with. But if some of those are actually already built in at SI and they're giving you, they're serving you these things, going, can you be the relegation? Yes, yes, can you yes. Be, yes can you be yes, the relegation? Yes. The person who saves. See, relegation? that's what I mean. Like that's just because I started. Remember, I done that save of Everton where I had to. You, you have to create these scenarios that I have to go yeah. on holiday. And again, I don't even know what the perfect date is. So Football Manager would have this date where like every time you're doing this challenge, you start from the 27th of February and the scenario is all set up for you already and you go mm -hmm. from there. Like I can't, already, that el might eliminate so many people that play and un start unemployed because already mm -hmm. they've got the challenge right there ahead of them. They know what the challenge is. They don't know who the yeah. team is yet. But yeah, they can see the challenge, and then boom, they go off. They go, and they can do it in different. And I, I like because football manager the PC version. Now we've got so many leagues and whatever. I, I don't feel that it will run out if that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's not like a FIFA where you've done something and it's done. It's like this time, like if with football manager, that's what maybe a football manager has the advantage with other things is that it can you could just keep going and going and going. You can even start your challenge and that be your main save. Or you could just keep doing challenges at different clubs because the yeah. scenario will be slightly different. It's going to be slightly different in the Bundesliga than it is in the Premier League. Yeah, so yeah. that same challenge can be slightly different in different leagues. Mm. Yeah, like challenges like injury crisis and like you, you're just you take over the club and half of your team's injured, but there's like <sighs> important matches on the horizon, and you're like, what do I do at this point? Like, you know, where is it going to be? Or, or you've got, you've got ten mobile, matches, though. ten matches to to win the treble, or like. Okay. It's, it's, it's silly right. because when I'm actually playing in the game, the engine, I am calling sometimes for mm. more realism. Oh, nobody hits the woodwork eight times. But then now we're talking about the other game things. I'm like, yeah, it should be more game, game. <laughs> so, but you know, like obviously the match engine, the match engine is sort of a separate part to the actual mm -hmm. world of football manager, yeah. though, right? Yeah. yeah so it's, it still sort of makes sense to me where the game can be a bit more game in a sense. In the sense, mm. but when you're in the game, in the match engine, it, it's football manager. Yeah. For me, I'm I'm looking at, and I've mentioned it before a few times. I've mentioned it publicly, and I've mentioned it on, on Patreon as well. Like, I see, I see the argument that that Miles has used a lot for things like the manager doesn't. That's not the manager's job. That's like you can't have stadium expansions. You can't have stadium yeah. designs. You can't. Nobody wants to see what a manager's going to spend all his money on. Like, understandable, understandable. Yeah, you know, it. but my my counter argument now is managers are old school. It's head coaches now, yeah. so therefore, your if you're going to use that, if we're going to use that same <laughs> argument, goodbye transfers because we exactly, because head yeah, coaches yeah. don't do transfers anymore. I just so like, that I means I was director watching, of football needs to be so much better. Like Jack has um, early access to is it the F one manager? F one, yeah, that's right. And like, yeah. I remember what was his thing he posted. He was just designing the logo and the amount mm -hmm. of fun and stuff he's just getting. I can imagine he spent like a couple hours just designing the logo. Mm -hmm. He's playing F1, but he's just designing the logo. Again, like, yeah. that could be us. Racing colours. <laughs> but that could be us with the stadium. Like, mm -hmm. oh, sh well, we've been on our stadium for what, two hours? But that game time has extended. Our mm -hmm. excitement, our enjoyment has extended as well, along with it, sort mm -hmm. of thing. And it doesn't have to be the stadium, but I don't, the stadium thing just felt, always a good gamey thing like that used to be an LMA manager it used to be in other management games like it's just a really way to engage you the stadium is a visual representation of how successful your football club is because and how you want to, your if, club to look like as well. because if you're starting in the non-league and you end up in the Premier League yes you see your stadium change over time you don't but you, you don't see. Oh, you do. Okay, yeah, you, you do, do a little bit, like because it's like yeah, the yeah, stand, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, more yeah, seats yeah. essentially, right? 
but you want to be able to see that. You want to understand that your club is growing and the success. And especially if you get the stadium named after yourself, you want to see that. These are little mm. little moments for oh, yourself no, where you can. No, we're not, we're not, we're not going down that route, Tony. Statues are we? Statues and everything. Statues. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> I thought was because I thought he was gonna push it to a dream of mine when they oh, had that three D cutscenes, like, oh. in, and it's not again. When you say cutscenes, it doesn't have to be things that so dramatic. Well, they've got them for the, for the walkouts of the tunnels. They're cutscenes now, aren't they? Yeah, just that first game of the season. And it's just like you see, don't know the fans outside or fan, everyone's excitement. The cameras all like doing the bird's eye view over the stadium and that. Oh, get, do you know? Do you know that sort of thing? That that would be nice. And get those, game, uh, get those those uh, big, big important matches, title pressure matches, and yeah, the fans yeah, are yeah, outside yeah, with yeah, the flares yeah, yeah, cheering yeah, yeah. the bus in. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, yeah. Because now with that engine, now they really don't have the. I'm not saying they don't have the excuse to do this, but they don't have the excuse that they don't have the capabilities of doing it. They 100 percent do now mm-hmm. with this new. Would, would the argument be that they don't want to be that they don't want to be seen to be endorsing that sort of behavior? Do you reckon that's the the, the argument that they go down? But they can choose what it what, like. Yeah. They can choose what it. It could just be like literally five seconds or ten seconds. The camera literally zooming into the crowd and they're just banging the drum, boom, boom, and you can just sort of hit like just some sort. I don't know, like just some sort of cutscene again to make you feel like. I remember uh, who was we had a guest and they were talking about it like. Sometimes you want to feel like this is a high pressure game. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want it just to click and say game. It's just any like it feels like you just want something to build up and it just feels like now you're a bit like, oh, this is a bit, I'm a bit nervous for this one sort of thing. You could even have little subtle tweaks, like the match sounds could be louder if yeah. it's a really high pressure game because oh, yeah. the crowd like, would be up for it, wouldn't they? The thing is that like, I'm not trying to change the game completely. I know some people are thinking about this and like, that's a crazy idea. And it's not like I, I, because I can know what I can see. What obviously in my head, mm-hmm. what I'm picturing, and it's not things that are dramatic. That's gonna take hours out of your game, out of your days, and stuff like that. And it's probably I, even skippable things as well. Like just press the skip bar or whatever. Just this, how this. games do. Other games do it. It's in other games. <laughs> that's what's my frustration as well. Like sometimes in other games, like I, I hate using FIFA because I don't want to. I hate like doing that comparison mm-hmm. FIFA and Football Manager. But, but so, I play FIFA right, and mm-hmm. sometimes before the game. You've got that thing where they're like they're doing a cutscene. Mm-hmm. I literally just press A and it skips the cutscene if I don't want to see it. Oh, but do you know what I mean, but if I do want to see it because I'm playing Manchester United, I'm gonna sit through the the little and the cutscenes is for FIFA. I've recognised that they they've they've tweaked it. Sometimes it was too long a couple of years ago. The cutscenes were too long. Now it's like, it feels like the, they've got the perfect timing with it. We we even joked at the start of this this game cycle. We both skipped through the Guard of Honor. Because yeah. we know you can skip the cutscenes. Yeah, yeah, and we're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, there's a card of honor. I've missed it. Like, and you've got to wait yeah. another year to see that again. Yeah, That's yeah. what you want because the skip button's there on yeah, the screen. It's there. If you yeah, don't want to yeah. see it, don't see it. Everyone sees the walkout. Everyone sees the teams line up. We all skip that. Yeah. More. So that's so. So they do have cutscenes in theory, though. So yeah. they do mm-hmm. sort of thing. I need, and again, I'm sure I've mentioned this before as well. I feel like there needs to be more made of a big signing okay, as well. I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. if you sign an absolute belter player, I guess, like, would Erdegaard at, at Arsenal, was that was there a vibe when Erdegaard signed? Like, oh, Erzil, God, Erzil was. Erzil, yeah. Like, you, that was, you need that, that level still, of still hype. I believe that to this day, I don't know how Wenger did that. Because he, because the manager as well, like, again, these little things, these little immersions, like, let's say you, you know the deal's been done, whatever, and you've got the press media before the game. So this is what us Wenger does, like, mm-hmm. yes, I have a surprise for you, for the fans. And yeah. then, like, a couple of days later, Mesut Ozil was signing, and we're just like, like, we just, our heads were just blown. Like, we just had Mesut yeah. Ozil in our head, the best playmaker ever in the whole world. But that's the sort of excitement, right? Like, that's yeah. what, we made that big money transfer, and then, that was such a big deal for us. And yeah, I, I get that as well in full manager. Because sometimes, again, we spent in our spot of Rotterdam, we bargain, bargain, bargain. But then it got to a point where I said, we need to compete. So then we spent big money. We spent like crazy millions on the player. And it's just like, it didn't, it's like we just bought him, like just not like normal, but it didn't feel like it was a big player. We didn't even get yeah. the message about the uh, shirt, shirt yeah, boosting, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, shirt sell boost. Mm. We didn't even get that. So it's just like, 
well, that's money down the drain. I don't even get a nice message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never an achievement for that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's odd, isn't it? Like, I mean, like, like Haaland at Man City as well would have been like kind of silly. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah, big yeah, yeah. Like, you know, and I just, I just don't feel as though the game rewards you for those little moments or creates something there. Like, more pressure as well when you've sold a big player and results drop off. Maybe yeah. like the fans start to be like, well, you know, maybe we could have done better if you hadn't sold this guy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could those fans turn a little bit more? Like derby matches, again, have those those high-pressure <laughs> moments. I think what we're talking about is, it's a word we've used a lot, it's it's immersion, isn't it? And and are we looking at this from from our perspective as storytellers, streamers, YouTube creators, podcasters? Yeah. What does the person who sits on the laptop want? What does the person? This is what who I'm trying. This is, I'm trying want? to have that. I'm like, trying to have that in my. Because I st- sometimes I do feel like I'm a part of a bit sometimes of both worlds. Because I play mm. my games fast, right? Like I am sort yeah. of a laptopy. Mm. I've only got a, f- a few a gamey, hours gamey, to play. Yeah, gamer, yeah, 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 yeah. So mm. I'm not one that's gonna sit back and enjoy every little feature that's in Football Manager, mm. and that's what as well. Like I can see that so. Even with my recommendations, I'm trying to think of things that it can be in a game, but it's not in the way. And it doesn't affect people. And now people have to play a certain way. We all have mm-hmm. to play like RDF now. We all have to play like this and that. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's not even to say foot manager at the moment is not currently good. I just think for my, this is my personal experience. It's actually the first time I'm saying this because I don't like doing football manager videos where like my opinion on this and that. Like if you go on my YouTube, I don't have a single video like that. It's all just tactic and whatever it is. Yeah. But at the moment, my feeling with Foot Manager at the moment is a bit stale. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like every time I play the game, like I've been there, I've done this before, sort of thing. If I feel like that a lot, and I don't get that every year. Like people's, like are you? What do people say? Oh, you're drained out, or you're maxed out. I'm like far from. Because if you go into my old FMs. The amount of game time on that FM is just crazy. And even back then, it's not like FM21 had a big change in FM22. But I just felt like there's actually, like, nowadays, that like, there's less of a difference between F- FM23 and an FM24 mm. sort of thing. Like, I felt like a lot of my, what I was going through in FM23 is still there in FM24 sort of thing. Mm. And now it's just, like, I'm at a bit where it's just like, oh, it's just a bit, I don't know where else to go. I, there's no other... I, I think <laughs> that's part of it. I think there is no, and this has maybe been leveled a couple of times before, there's yeah. no viable alternative at this yeah, point. Yeah, and therefore, yeah. is it a case of you don't have to push out too hard if you've not got anyone to push back against? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, argument yeah. has been leveled a few times. Yeah, yeah. You know, what would happen if somebody turned up with another football management simulation game? Then what? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, give you give the the audience a choice of of something else to play. I sort of get the idea that yeah, the game hasn't changed too much in FM twenty three, twenty four, twenty two. I think it's I think like, it's mainly this year. Like even last year, I felt FM twenty three had its uniqueness compared mm-hmm. to FM twenty. Like those things that were a bit. This is FM twenty three. Like this one though, I just feel there's no. Like, oh, this wouldn't have happened in FM23. I don't have mm. that sort of thing. I've got it. the... I, I, always, I always joke on with, with people when, like, we talk about last year's game. Yeah. And, and lots of people didn't like FM23. Lots of people didn't like FM23. I personally... When when people ask me going like, what do you think about FM twenty three? I was like, I think I've got I think I've got a different game yeah, to everyone else because yeah, I, no, I love no, FM twenty three. FM twenty three. Oh, what's the what's the what's the if thing in wrestling when you're supposed to hate something like you're supposed heel. to it's the heel. Hill, yeah, heel I think yeah. FM twenty three was a hill. Like my game time was crazy, <laughs> but it felt like every time I just hated it, but I clearly didn't. Sort I of thing. Like I clearly like, loved the game, but I, I think that's like, what the yeah. game did to me. Right, like it was. It felt like it was meant to be that way. Like. Oh, I'm coming against some difficulties. Like, yeah. oh shit! <laughs> yeah. FM23 rewarded you. 
yes, for working yes, hard. Yeah. And that's and what just, upset that. a lot of people because some people <laughs> didn't want to work hard because why should you want to work hard? It's yeah, a video yeah. game. Very quick one while the show's on. I want to talk a little bit about Patreon because some of you might be thinking, oh, why do we sign up for Patreon? Should we sign up for Patreon? Well, I'll tell you what. How's about this, right? If you consider signing up for Patreon, there's tiers between £3, £5 and £10 a month. You will get early access to all these public episodes. They're normally out on a Thursday. You get them at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. So that's over 24 hours in advance. You also get an extra bonus episode every single Monday that is exclusive to Patreon. It won't be seen anywhere else. And it'll be with myself, maybe like an FM creator. It could be a musician, a footballer, a journalist. It could be anybody. We've done some special shows in there as well. We've done uh, started doing a watch along with Second Yellow Card as we watched Goal 3. Uh, spoiler alert, it's dreadful. Uh, that's on there. There's the Insomnia Gaming Festival show. That's on there. There's the Christmas special show, which has got Dupe and Breezy and RDF and myself going through some football manager legends. We've got other watch alongs planned as well. We've got some special ideas. And of course, as part of Patreon, you can suggest those ideas as well. And if they're good, we might start making them. So you've got that. Plus, of course, you can send us your tactics for the Tactics Garage. And there's even a tier, which means that we will help save your save. So if you're really struggling and you need a little bit of TJ or probably more likely RDF Tactics love and making sure your save works perfectly, then get signed up to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the FM show pod. And of course, if you have already signed up, we appreciate your support so much. It means the world to us and it really helps get the show growing and it means we can do some cool things. So thank you very much. If you can afford to support us, patreon.com forward slash the FM show pod. Back to the show. For me, I thought FM 23 really brought me out in terms of understanding. I think I developed tactically in FM 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I looked at the That's game people, right? in a different way. Would I have done it had it been like it is in FM24? Would I have just been like a bit surface level? Doubt, right? Yeah, people. But a bit I think like, 23 was the making of me. So, like, so like, okay, even when I'm okay, I mean, like, even when I was watching people stream, right? Like in FM23, everyone had these like different systems. Everyone was just rocking with something. Nowadays, it's just like every stream I go into, everyone's doing that gamey thing again, right? Just the 423. Yeah. Why? Because it works. Mm -hmm. But people are like that right now because they don't feel, like you say, that FN24 was rewarding. Maybe they just don't feel that FN24, FN24 is rewarding or worth going through that period to come out, mm -hmm. come out the other end. <laughs> sorry. But well, I still know. But again, like, even but, with FN24, like with me, sorry, with me, it just feels like every season feel, just feels the same. That's mm -hmm. where I'm at with FN24. Like, it's just the same season sort of thing. Whereas like FN23, like... I, I had relegations and then promotions and that sort of thing. Where this one, like, it's just, I, I get like from game five, right? Like the first season, mm -hmm. post, 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 first five games. The next season, first five games, post, post, post. Like, I just feel like I'm going through the, it's just like a re, like, it's just, yeah, that's what it yeah. feels like sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So unless you are really doing like one of those days where you are building the nation or you are actually going through different leagues, that obviously is going to feel different because, you're going from conference to League Two to League One. You're not playing every divise and every divise and every divise. But even and last yes, year, probably. I felt like Everton, when I was Everton, it was like it was always different positions. Mm -hmm. I was always ending in a different position. This year is like once I got first, it was first, 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 first. Yeah. Last year when I was Everton, it was first, second, first, second, sort of thing. Yeah. I, I wasn't getting that back to back sort of thing because everything clicked. Yeah, I think I think that's probably fair to be honest. Like, I, because yeah. I, because obviously over the last few years, my saves haven't been the Premier League. Essentially, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. games do play differently. The the way I approach the game is different. I am looking to adapt my tactics to try and play the game a little bit more realistic. I know that the yeah, game yeah, doesn't, yeah. doesn't reward you for that, but oh, that, I'm oh. trying to. That's something we'll talk about. Oh, right? that's... Like, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm trying to develop the side as I go along. I know I could, and I keep saying this to, to my child. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know I could well, just do can. a four, two, three, yeah, one, and win. And just go, but, yeah. But I want to try and instill what I feel how this football club would play, yeah, and how I feel game. that the tactics would be, and then look to go right. That tactic hasn't quite worked. Let's do something else. And I'm not trying to 
come up with crazy systems and brand new ways of playing. Yeah, I'm not yeah. looking at just two defender systems that <laughs> have a front seven. I'm looking at how do I make an effective 4-3-3? How do yeah. I change that 4-3-3 with different roles to make it play differently, to, for yeah, it to be yeah, more yeah. attacking, for it to be more defensive, for it to be more counter-attacking, to be more aggressive? How do I look at maybe making a... I don't know, like a three at the back system, like a four, five, one. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but that's because I remember we were speaking about that spot right at that And remember, I kept mentioning how like it just felt once I got knocked out of the season, uh, Champions League, then I'll just have so many months where I have nothing to play for because the mm. league is practically guaranteed we're yeah. going to win it anyway. So that yeah, that's what I mean. So at least with last year, Everton save where it didn't feel. Like, if I got knocked out early, I was like, oh, oh we still got to play the Premier League. So, like, we still got to play these games now and now get through the season again and try and win the league or wherever our target is. But whereas this year, it just feels like, or it felt like in this save anyway, in particular, I just got knocked out. But I know I'm not the only one because we, the guest at the time, Mad FM, said he went through something similar and other people are going through the same, like a similar thing. Yeah, I've not I've not hit that level of the building nation yet, yeah. and I must admit. But I do feel you're going at a decent pace. Where I feel maybe they'll both come out at the same time. Yeah, if that's, if that yeah. Means, like, like like I don't want to get to that level that <laughs> that Mads at that second yellow cards at where they are just dominant all the time. And yeah, you're only yeah, looking yeah. at the Champions League. For me, that's when that save loses its appeal. And yeah, yeah, imagining yeah. playing that on your own when you're at home. That would be like, I can't imagine how dull that would be. Like, really, yeah. that would be horrific as a game, as a gaming experience. Again, that's all through as well. That's all helped mm-hmm. by being able just to sign who we want. Yeah, all of this sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, even like, oh, it's just weird. Like, if I'm in a crazy, I don't know. If I'm like, if I'm Larissa, I shouldn't just be able to go and pick up any Brazilians. So maybe some Brazilians like me, I just want to chill here for one more year or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I shouldn't just be able to. And Brazilians are a great example just considering the amount of Brazilians that are all over the globe playing for. I, prob- I probably shouldn't have been able to sign JK. Really, if we're being if we're being really blunt about it, I shouldn't have been able to sign JK. I mean, but on, then again, you say you shouldn't. Or... They they can always be that. That could make the game fun. They yeah, could always be that. Yeah. Oh my god, this guy's possible to get sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? But, we were playing European football, so there is that. Yeah, so again, but yeah. you wouldn't have like that feeling again. That immersion bit is just a bit because mm. you've just got him. You got him. It wasn't like a. It wasn't a surprise, and nothing was made out like it was surprising. The inbox as well as like you just bought a youngster from Bayern Munich. Like this is massive. Like you know but, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You've signed an actual wonder. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like those bit, you get the the next gen top fifty thing in there. I've got two players in the next gen top fifty. No one at my club cares. Surely you would be sat there going, "We've got two of the best Attendees. youngsters in the world." Attendees. Apparently, nothing was nothing was drawn to my attention yeah. about this. We mentioned it on on a couple of episodes previously about about youth development. Yeah, there's no flags from anyone going. You don't realize how good this kid's going to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. really drawing your attention to hey. Hey, we've got we've got ourselves a little talent here, by the way, um, yeah. and and we mentioned there about the game doesn't reward you. See, and I was playing. Oh, I was watching a the scout way. today. Mm. Uh, he scouted at Arsenal and Chelsea, and he was mm-hmm. talking about Jude Bellingham and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And he picked out those three guys. I remember him talking about Jude Bellingham, and he said like it was Claire from mm. under thirteens. This guy was just he was he was. Different. different. Yeah, yeah, he said that he had, was it, 68 scout reports on him from 27 different scouts. Like, it's just crazy. And that's obviously from under 12, 13, 14, 15 or whatever. Mm-hmm. And obviously they tried to sign him and what they couldn't get him. But whatever it is, but they they knew, like, some people, sometimes it's that obvious. Because <laughs> it yeah. wasn't, again, he was talking about, he wasn't talking about his playing ability. Of course, his playing ability is good. Otherwise, he would have been there. It's the character, the person, the actual, they just knew that guy was special. The tall Callum Hudson and Doyle as well was similar. Mm. They just knew he was special. Obviously, whatever happened with agents and block move to Bayern Munich or whatever, that might have delayed his, but he's playing that not in the forest. So it's not anything to look down at. The last mm-hmm. one was Charlie Masunda, who he said, like, mm-hmm. technically now, if we're talking technically, 
this guy was just the best thing you would ever see as a kid. Some of us might not even, some people listening might not even have heard of him. But obviously there was going to be question marks about him as a person and that sort of stuff. And that shit, that, in the, again, in the game, that's not really there. And that's how I'm trying to play this year, right? I remember before mm-hmm. I was talking about adding uh, the personality into my view, but also the media handling stuff, because I now mm-hmm. want to know, again, this is from more of a scouting thing. I want to know about the person. And that's going to help me know if the person's got a good personality trait and if it's going to be easier to develop him and that sort of stuff. If your youth coach can tell you that this person is great because of so-and-so, it's just me. I don't know. It's just it's it's the Sir Alex Ferguson way, isn't it? He always yeah. wanted to make sure that it, that you were the right person, whether you were whether you were yeah, the best yeah, footballer yeah, in the yeah, world yeah, or yeah, not. Yeah. You could be, and football is littered with yeah, incredible yeah. players who have really poor attitudes, or really poor discipline, or really poor decision making and judgment off the pitch. That means <laughs> they never live up to how good they are. Technically, I mean, you can go into any bookshop and read any book of the players that never were. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But someone like Sir Alex Ferguson would have looked at that and went, "I don't care how good you are, your <laughs> head is not right for Manchester United, so you don't you don't play for Manchester United." Like, yeah. he always used to say that player's a Manchester United player because he understood the mentality, he understood everything that comes with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you and again, you just can't really instill that per se or feel that you're instilling it in yeah, football manager. Because it's not yeah. And yeah, you that, can that's a what... bunch of model citizens and perfectionists, but how much bearing does it actually have? Like if you get someone in there who's got who's a bit of a knobhead, how much that's does it disrupt the rest of the team? It should. Yeah. It should, apple, yeah. Should that's another thing. Yeah, you don't actually know. Yeah. That's a... but again that's what I'm in my head I'm going a bit like when I mean gamey I know, I know what my mistake is. I think in foot manager, when we're saying a bit gamey, that means like we know what buttons to press and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But in my head, like when I mean gamey, is like I can see like. So if you're playing Assassin's Creed or you're playing The Sims and your guy needs to eat and you've got the energy bar and all of this, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You can see things happening, sort of thing. And these things have an effect. If your players, if your person's hungry, it's going to have an effect on what he's doing, right? So if mm. you've got these donuts we should say causing issues within the squad it should be actually causing an issue rather than it just being a message okay, it should be something that you should address that you have to address sort of thing let's expand upon that then if you're fatigued during a match here's half an idea i've got your all of your attributes should dec- I, I don't know if this does actually happen or not but all of your attributes or important attributes should decrease at the same time during a game. So, for example, say your decision-making is 10. I'm just going on the middle. Decision-making is 10. You're fatigued, right? There's a chance your decision-making is going to drop because you're fatigued. You're not concentrating yeah, enough. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So the likelihood of, of these issues occur and making a bad decision, making a bad pass, should really be ramped up. I think they maybe are, but... I think there needs to be a little bit more. But this is what I mean. It's so when, it. like the game, we, make we it don't gamey, know, we don't know, like, does it? <laughs> no, even down to the advice, right? So like mm. the player is not, like he's <laughs> he's losing his concentration, whatever it is. But obviously, because the game is gamey and certain attributes really do matter, a James mm. Milner, you can keep on because of his determination yeah. and his natural fitness and his stamina. Is like, goes back this guy's going to plow before, through it. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like his actual personality matters because now mm-hmm. he's just going to plow through it. But if he's balanced and sort of just a relaxed person or whatever it is and he's tired, then he's not going to, oh, I've got 10 minutes, I'm just going to absolutely smash these 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That you, you don't want might to bring someone on. on the yeah, yeah. fickle. You don't put Mario Balotelli on to see the game out with, <laughs> out with 10 minutes, do you? <laughs> but Mario, you hold that in the corner, see what you do. Yeah, but like, it's very difficult to know if these things actually have an effect, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, what does team actually do? Because, again, it's these things, right? Like, mm-hmm. some people will swear by a player regardless of their attributes. I'm sort of like Alex Collado, right? Like, mm-hmm. his work rate in teamwork is never great, but I see the guy clearly in the match engine tracking and putting in for tackles in but then you see another person with similar attributes or even better not do the same thing 
So it's just like, yeah, sometimes it's very difficult to actually know what's happening. Ish. Half an idea. Half mm. an idea. Looking at attributes, because I'm going to use this example here, right? <clears throat> because you see something different in Galado than the game does. Yeah. Okay. In terms of attributes, I, I, right? No, I 100. No, no. <laughs> no, like, like in terms in terms of its attributes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If you say his work rate's not very good, but you put him in the in the team and he works for you. Yeah. 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 Should there be a way? And how do I explain this? Scouts look at a player; they bring you a rough idea of this is what we think he's like. Yeah. yeah. You should then be able to assess him yourself. And there should be a way that the attributes are adjusted because you might see something that the scouts don't or the scouts might oh, see no, something yeah, that you don't you yeah, I know you because they're going like, they might be saying, Oh, he's, he's really good. He's really balanced. He's, he's really skillful. And then you can say, but he gives the ball away. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't go anywhere. Like he's doing loads of step overs. That was really fancy, but it, there's no end product. So yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. the flair is high, but the dribbling's not as good, or, or or he doesn't really go past a player. Maybe you, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, yeah but maybe yeah. you could see some. Maybe you could see some. Have the option of checking out some of the highlights of the scout report and watching those things back and saying like, yeah. Again, it'll be like crazy. I don't know about gaming and stuff. So it'll be like crazy coding, but it'll be good. It'll be crazy, though, isn't it? Just clicking up a player's profile and just like you see something different than yeah. the scout actually sees. Yeah, but, but I, because I don't believe that in real life, a scout turns up with a report, gives it to the manager, and the manager goes, "Cool, let's sign him." Oh, having no. never watched him, <laughs> no. Definitely that makes not. no sense. Surely well, the manager has. There is. Only... So you have like Case Bebe at Manchester yeah. United. That's yeah. <laughs> clearly Ali, didn't watch Ali him. Ali Dai at Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> clearly didn't watch. <laughs> Hello, I'm George Ware's cousin. Oh, fine. He says he is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if we're trying to add realism, then yeah. maybe there's that, or maybe it's director of football mode, and the director of football signs the player, and the manager hasn't seen them. And that's even then, I, I feel as though it even must then be the me, manager yeah. would know a little bit. Again, it might just be a selfish thing as well with the content creating thing, but I just, that director of football mode, it's just, I need that sort of stuff, man, because I think I do trying to do it yourself manually in the game it doesn't even give you that feel in the first place. I think mm. that sometimes like, you can get a bit excited when you're setting it up and then that excitement pretty much dies down when you're getting into thicker things because you realise you can't actually do certain things. But... Oh, that was just like beautiful. Like man. having just... like having a transfer model. Yeah. A model. Being there, a being there for model. a couple of years. Like the model is we're buying these sorts of players and the club buying those sorts of players. Every you say as a manager, it's not working. We've been doing this thing for three years. It's not working. Can we change the model or I have to leave? Like, that I was gonna say every club, I'm not sure. But a mo model is a, is it's a football in football. Like yeah. clubs have them. I think now it's gonna be if you're if you're talking about more recent times and football manager want to do what's happening in football recently, then one hundred percent, basically all clubs will or should have a model. At least I'm not sure about back in the day. Obviously things were a bit different and how teams were doing things were a bit different previously. Mm -hmm. But teams, any clubs that I've been lucky to do something for, whatever, even if it's just a scouting thing, like straight away the first thing is this is what we need. Otherwise yeah. I'm just out there just scouting, literally. Just, what am I scouting for? Yeah. I think this is what the recruitment focus was for, intended for. But again, it's just, mm -hmm. it's not the same thing. Like, you don't go out and say, look, this is what I want. I want a two and a half between four and a half player. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you want certain characteristics. You want certain, you know, but you actually have a model as well. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to have, the, in football, they'll say the four corners. You've got psychological, you've got social, technical, and tactical, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like, that should be... Because that is pretty much basic. Like, if you do your anyone that wants to get into scouting, if you do your level one, that's pretty much the basic. It's mm -hmm. covering the four corners, which I think football manager again, like the scout report. Sometimes, once I got into football and I started doing looking at these things as well in football manager, I remember having an argument about to someone about attribute masking and they're saying it's easy mode not to have it. I'm like, 
but I've done like scouting and like, this is not how it is anyway. So like in my head, the only real way, if, if you want to go down that route, the only real way is to turn off the attributes. Mm. Now, literally you can't argue with me telling me that attribute masking is not having it on is the easy way when I could just say, well then just turn off the attributes because it doesn't take a person three weeks, four weeks to get, to uncover the basics about a player and that sort of stuff and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. It's, it's football. It's football. But I do think the model thing is very important. I think I think that should be like a day one thing. Like when you're in football manager, when you're actually at the club, day one, it should be sort of a, a model thing. It might not even be like you setting it up. Again, football manager have its ways of doing it, but in its own way. So you have the the club culture and that sort of thing. Must sign elite players and players under under twenty three. Like they have these sort of things, but it's not really. A model. <laughs> is is there any way? Would it be interesting when you start the save and you click that you take over the club, and the first screen you see is that little thing that says TJ Tactics has taken over at Sunderland, like you know, um, and he joins the club, blah blah blah, replaces the former manager. Yeah. Is there any value in in having our interview before the game starts? So you'd then be introduced to things like the model, the players that are currently unsettled at the club, the players that are injured. I don't know whether it's another additional thing that you can find out when you get into the game. Yeah. I mean, football manager's another... might be like, well, you said you wanted less clicks and I'd, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking as part that, of those, but... like, as part of those three that, game like, modes. Welcome ceremony, right? But I do feel like it, it, that sort of thing can make the game different than previous editions. It could make you. you know it, I mean? could, like, it could make you at loggerheads with the board from day one as well if you've picked the wrong yeah, answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, if you if you've really kicked off about, the it might model, not even be a negotiable thing. Yeah, like, it might. It might just be this is the club's model. Like sometimes you just walk into a model, right? Mm. Like, I don't. Or maybe feel... you can adjust it ever so slightly. Like, and yeah. if you're if you're less experienced, you might get less wiggle room and then. Yeah. Negotiations that are and don't in there. get like don't get twisted. Like, I wouldn't say each club's models like everyone's drastically different. So even if football manager wanted to have it where it's like sort of set in stone, like most clubs will be like it's gonna be pretty similar, pretty basic things anyway. Mm. But some clubs will have its certain things, like you know, Ajax will have its certain thing where mm. we spoke about this before actually on previously about Ajax and what they do in the game. Like mm. I feel if Ajax if the game was installed that Ajax had this model that they had to follow, then I feel that you, that represents Ajax better, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, in Football Manager. Like, if mm -hmm. you open my save now and look at the Ajax, you'll be like, that is not the Ajax way. <laughs> They're not doing anything Ajax is supposed to be doing. Sort of thing, Le, but... Le Masia isn't there for Barcelona, yeah, is it? But like... You know what I mean? But if that was, like, a thing in the game where, like, this is the way the club has to be sort of thing, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe after five years, you have this freedom to... Then or when it comes to signing a new contract, you have these more legway and whatever to actually mm. negotiate and whatever you want to start implementing. But it's very rare that you come in as a coach and you're you're able to implement straight away a whole club's game uh, model because most mm. of these things will be set because it's a model from top to bottom, right? So it'll be from the yeah. youth. So it'll be things that sometimes set, or it could just be very gamey where you can just set it yourself because it's your game sort of thing yeah but if you've got a bigger reputation you're more likely to yeah get more likely bit, to bit yeah because yeah, 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 yeah. you know i suppose you know maybe whoever comes in at liverpool for example slot like you know he's coming in, he's he's he maybe hasn't got as much sway as yeah, yeah, Klopp yeah. would have because so i'm like, pretty sure they would have brought in now, people because they brought in people, right, to get him. So didn't yeah. they hire, yeah, they hired, like, people <laughs> to then get Slot. So I am doubt now Slot's just going to come in and have this complete freedom to do things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, so, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of of, of possibilities for things yeah. that... I think that the only thing with Fort Manjar, in their, for, in their case, they have to be careful with these things because, for one, yeah. it has to be legally right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not like... To be fair, that like, Fortnite have these things in the game already. So like, yeah, it's, it's already they have you under twenty threes or whatever. You know what I mean? Like the amount of times you sign a club and go to a club, but mm -hmm. then how many times do we break these promises and it, nothing? Mm -hmm. 
that that's what I this is what I sort of dislike about FM. It's like you can quite literally just ignore these things. If yeah. you're winning, all is forgiven. I get kind of real life. Even though, because even in real life, things can turn sour. You can win and things go sour because you're not doing it the right way. That yeah, you know, yeah. David Moyes, you know, winning but like, not not in yeah, the like, right like, Chelsea, the Chelsea, way. Chelsea have sacked their managers or whatever despite them winning because they're not happy with a certain thing. Yeah, and we, we've seen managers win the league and get sacked in, in the same season or whatever it is because yeah. things can be sour if you're still not on the same page. If we think about. One thing that we know is definitely coming in, um, Woman. in FM twenty five, women's football, which we're that? all very very excited about, um, and the fact that it's going to be within the same universe, we're led to believe, is even more exciting. So yeah, so the game should theoretically run at the same time. Seriously, that's what that's what I think. They, 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 that's what they were trying to suggest. That it all runs in the same universe. Okay. It kind of has to, right? The because idea then, would be that you can transition then the, between, within, the woman's between... universe at the start would be very, very small, right? So yeah. they kind of have to. So, so you could take charge of a woman's team, and then go into the men's game, and then back into the women's game, and vice versa. That's how I understand it works. So you're telling me if I go kick Arsenal, like, don't, don't even make me cry. You, if you I click Arsenal, it's going to have Arsenal. Arsenal no, but like, see how it's lined up? It's got Arsenal, then Arsenal under 23s, Arsenal 18s, and then all players. Is it mm-hmm. actually going to have Arsenal, Arsenal under 23, Arsenal 18s, and then Arsenal women's? I believe so, yeah. yeah that yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. The only question I'm going to have on this point, and I know that none of us know the answer, Can is I promote how it? many teams <laughs> there's going to be. Like, because, you know... What level are we going down to? What yeah, research yeah, have we yeah, got? Yeah, we yeah. don't know. Will you will you be able to request a woman's team as the as your managerial career goes through if you haven't got one? Oh good point, Matt. Like Blythe Spartans I'll, I'll probably, create probably don't woman, have man. a woman's team in right. <laughs> the start. So so could I create Blythe Spartans women? I'm already thinking about my event 25 save, you know. I think I'm just going to create a club. Create a club? Women's, yeah, create a women's club. Mm-hmm. That's a good point, you know. That will be, again, a nice little thing. Because Go to the board some... and arts for a woman's, for the women's team. Yeah, because there'll be some teams. Because it grows so... the profile of a club, right? It can. Yeah. It's going to have more fans, right? Logic. And, and there'll be some sort teams that have, sort got, <laughs> that have got women's football teams who are not in... And we'll just say the WSL because again, most of our listeners are from from the UK. There'll be big teams whose players aren't in the WSL that might not be in the game at the start of the game. Mm-hmm. If we presume that the license is just for WSL, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, Sunderland women's might not be in the in the game, which is like we know it's a team, we know it's a successful team, but it might not be in the game we don't know so how much women's football is in is speculative at that point i'm just thinking how much how many many european (laughs) leagues are in and yeah 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 american leagues so but i'm really looking forward to it and i really am excited i think it's gonna i think that's what's gonna open the game up to a much wider level of playership because i've spoken to people as i'm sure you have as well aaron like on stream, people who are who are excited about managing the women's football teams, being able to represent those sides, having a different game experience. Because yeah. again, we're led to believe that everything is reanimated differently. Women being motion mapped, so of course they run differently, they move differently, they kick differently, yeah, they yeah, head differently, yeah. they throw differently. So it has to play different. It can't just be, oh yeah, that's women's football. Like and it's just the same graphics. It it can't be. It, it's not the women's football deserves its own its own space oh, yeah. to, to be, and and obviously you know as I've said that they'll do it they'll do it right. I am very very excited about it. You're making me nervous now because it has to be right. <laughs> <gonna> be, <laughs> and ultimately, that's the thing. FM twenty five. I feel to like this right. is the closing. This I feel like this is the closing statement on it. FM twenty five has to be right. 
there's a lot of pressure on SI for, F for FM25 to be right. I've never ever thought about that, you know. I never thought of it like that. In my head, it was always like they're changing a lot, so don't expect too much at first. But now you're, you're speaking about the woman's like, no, that bit has to be right, though. Mm -hmm. And if people have said over the last few years, oh, I find it too easy, or oh, I find it too difficult, or oh, I don't like the fact that, you know, it was un unplayable and oh, Difficult. the game's broken. Well, now <laughs> they've <really> said, <laughs> now they've said we're completely redesigning it. Now it has to be right. And what if it's not? I hope it is. I, I genuinely hope it is. But I don't even, I don't even know. Where do we you go if there is if there is a concern? That, that's a closing statement and a half. It's going to be sad just the whole night thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode, just to start from the beginning. Yeah. The same Hello, goal. welcome to the show. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, FM twenty five has to be right, mm -hmm. but because they're changing so much as well, so it's there. Like many people that have been playing this game for a long time, might open up FN25. Let's say it's not right. Open up FN25 and be like, this might, this is the end of the row. And then it's the end of the row. Yeah, they should be like that with it, right? Because they don't want to learn something new mm -hmm. and whatever it is or. They're not going to wait that extra year. Like they're, gonna, they're not going to grind this year out again to then play FM26. It's like, whatever's going on in their lives, whatever. It's like, no, so this is it now. I have to end there. Because people have done what, like uh, FM24, right? Mm -hmm. Some, yeah, some people yeah. are like that. Yeah, some, some, people, some people skipped FM24 to go straight to FM25. Yeah. Some people got upset because the expectations of FM23 weren't met, despite the fact that nobody gave any expectations of how good <laughs> FM23 was going to be. So if people's expectations are, from what I think we're all led to believe, expectations are fairly high, you've got to, got to at least yeah. get Mine's, up there, otherwise... I don't know what my expectation is. Like, I'm expecting bugs in a match. Engine. Like, that has mm. that, that. I'm sorry, like, if you're expecting a flawless game in the match engine... Ain't then, you might, then yeah, you yeah, I don't know. Don't I like don't you know. watch wait, watch any wait a couple watch any game. I mean, again, we'll use FIFA as an example. How many FIFA glitch videos are there? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. the players do crazy things, they go flying through the air and like you if you're wanting a brand new match engine, hey, it's guess crazy, what? Though, you it? might it's see like, those. How did that get through the like did no one play this game first? Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. I always ask myself that. I know it's crazy, uh, right? Mm -hmm. We're allowed to speak about it, right? Because of your Sometimes, right? Honest to, honest to God, we I get the FM early. Then obviously people play it, and it is flawless, right? Mm -hmm. And then the beta comes out. The same that everyone's getting. Then all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh yeah, that there's a bug. Wait, there's a bug. <laughs> just yeah. like, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> Why have they given everyone a different game? <laughs> <laughs> this was literally me in FM24, right? So we had this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the positional play, I swear to you, Tony, everything just felt it was ridiculous, crisp, wasn't it? Ridiculously fluid. Like, it felt like the libero was just moving because I put him on libero. So it was just like, I'm going to show off and show you my new role. <laughs> That's what it felt like, right? And it got to this stage, and I'm like, I'm not actually sure I'm playing the same game. <laughs> like, I can't tell you the first time I, like, I didn't hit the woodwork. I don't think I hit the woodwork. I definitely did, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe that's just the new game feeling, though, right? Sometimes you yeah. get that, and you roll, like, you're roll so excited. Glasses, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see the first volley, and they're like, "Oh my god, the game's so good!" I remember the first deflection. I got so yeah. happy about the first deflection. I was so just like, "Wow!" Yeah, wow. I, think I, yeah. I, remember, I remember texting you going, "I've seen a player over here pass. This is the best game ever." <laughs> <laughs> it's that sort of thing. Isn't it? So you kind of like any other issues that you don't really see it. Until mm -hmm. obviously you played it a few times, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I see what people say saying now. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, FM24, when it came out, I'm trying to remember the bug, like, was, was it buggy when it came out? I think the only thing people complained about, which annoyed me, was too many goals. Mm. 
I think, yeah. And then they dialed it back a little bit. Yeah, and then they dialed it back. And then that's when I felt that, oh, now I'm hitting the woodwork more. Because if Mm. it feels like you've just reduced my goals now, (laughs) I didn't care about the seven fours. Bring them back. (laughs) Obviously, a bit bit unrealistic, obviously. But but that's the difficulty. That that just shows you the difficulties of a football manager, right? Because they've got to code things differently. If there's too many goals, there's got to be different possibilities. There has to be different endings now, like to your shots, right? So now, off target, not every shot's going to be slightly off target. Some's going to be hitting the post and some's going to be doing this and some's going to be doing that. And if you're having 30 shots a game like I do, there's a chance you're going to see the same stuff a lot of the times. Yeah, it's the XG model's going to have to get rebuilt and <laughs> the press assist going to have to go up. And yeah, there's a lot. One one thing changes and it's like chaos theory, isn't it? One thing affects yeah, everything yeah, else. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. I think that's the difficulty. With the, like, I don't know how they can get that across to some fans but a lot of us don't understand that at all and again that's on an old game on an old code yeah they're now making a brand new game from scratch so maybe it might be slightly different we don't know we don't know we will speculate and i'm sure having listened to all this i'm sure you've all got your own views your comments so please do add them below Comment yeah. below on the on the video. Let us know what you think. What do you think? What do you want in FM25? What do you not want in FM25? If you're not in the Discord, come and join us in the Discord and have more conversation in there. There's so much more space to do that. Or drop us an email, which is the FM Show Pod at gmail.com. Aaron, if people want to tweet us or find us on social media, where can they do so? They can find us at the FM Show Pod. So if you want to go Twitter, for an example, it'll be twitter.com forward slash the F. M show pod mm-hmm. Boom. And go and show us some love over on tiktok where we're putting some clips up there as well uh from the shows and maybe instagram if we can remember the login uh, we've <laughs> <that as> well. <laughs> um we should say as well thank you of course for for for, for listening aaron if people want to find more of your content where can we find you you got loads they of can, stuff out of the minute they can find me at rdf tactics actually speaking on that if you are someone that just likes to do social media things and you want to be involved in that sort of oh, thing yeah. again just let us know man <laughs> that made me laugh the instagram thing it's sort of like oh crap we've got instagram <laughs> yeah 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 if you're good at clips and you want to <laughs> and, and, and you know what our password might be then come and join us because we don't know how to get into instagram anymore because <laughs> honestly you are talking to two people that are not very social media i know it might come as a surprise to some people that i'm not social media heavy i'm facebook is my thing like mm. i'm very facebooky i want to see pictures and <laughs> you know I, i'm that sort of person like i don't really like twitter i'm just on it because content creating is probably the best place to be but i'm not on like snapchat i'm not on instagram tiktok absolutely how told you on that i don't because that scares me oh. i open up the app and then like do you want to sync this contact? Do you want to do that contact? I'm like, oh, I, just, come on, I just want to see a clip. <laughs> it, it, might, it probably doesn't surprise any of you to know that I'm not particularly uh, savvy at social media. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say that. Oh, man. But again, um, like that, this stuff obviously does help us. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, it's like it is a, something new, for, especially like me. It's going to be new for me to learn, man. Especially so, TikTok. That scares me. So on that then, if you do see us post something, <laughs> if it's a video of the show or if it's like a, a sort of a link or a clip or a post, if you see it on Twitter, give it a retweet, give it a like. That's yeah, 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 that really absolutely. helps us out because we yeah. don't fucking know what we're doing. So like... <laughs> If you could do that, that'd be much appreciated. Um, drop a like on the video as well. Subscribe to the channel. You can find me at, at Tony Jameson on Twitter or Tony Jameson FM on Twitch. I will also plug the football shirt social, which oh, myself yes. and Sai Maggio do, which is a podcast YouTube show all about the wonderful world of football shirts. We can get Aaron on there to talk about his collection very soon as well. So if you do want to have a watch of that, it's the football shirt social <laughs> on YouTube or it's at footy shirt sock on Twitter because there was too many characters. Um, <laughs> and of course, this remember is awesome to social media. This is the- <laughs> and, and remember to join us on Patreon if you can afford to support the show. Aaron, where is Patreon? It is on the internet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll try to be a comedian for a few seconds. I'm sorry. www patreon.com forward slash the fm show pod 
Lovely. On the internet. <laughs> like I say, let us know below. What do you want to see in FM25? Hope you enjoyed the show. We love you all. Take care. We'll see you next week. Stay Peace safe. Out. All the best. Want to learn even more about Football Manager? Subscribe to the Patreon. Just visit patreon.com slash the FM show pod. Don't forget to rate and review and follow along on the socials at the FM show pod.